Oh, hell yeah. I, there's no way I can catch up and say hello to everybody. So, first of all, it's me, that bitch. How you doing? We're just doing this for a bit. Yeah. Zuki. Lulu. You're not, you're not giving me anything. I'm just, I'm all hips, baby. Oh. How you guys doing? Man, I really fucking got y'all crying. I almost cried myself. I need to turn this, put this down. I'm a lot shorter than I realized. So. Dab me, Odin. <clears throat> yeah! I don't know why I started recording this part, but I figured it'd be fun. Why it was up so high? I know. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, enough of that. We're done with that. Okay. So, thank you guys so much. Uh, I can't possibly catch everybody who's in and who have, like, popped in for just a second. So, uh, I am going to uh, go back. I know we've been live for 30 minutes, and now you get to talk to me. Um, but let me go through and slam on all of this shit. Uh, uh, Mouse, thank you so much for the $15. Here's another year of depraved debauchery. Sugar Crash, thank you so much for resubscribing at Tier 1 for three months in a row. Uh, Theo, thank you so much for resubscribing at Tier 1 for six months in a row. A, got my gold jorts and channel bursary. Congrats to you, Odie. Thank you. Jen never says, Dyer, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Happy one year, Odie. Thank you. Theo, thank you so much for gifting a Tier 1 sub to Coda. I love it. Thank you so much for gifting five Tier 1 gift subs to Shadow Work, uh, Rafki Plays, The Rat 851, Redacted ASMR, and Atlas Series. Frizzy07, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Happy channel anniversary, everyone. Theo, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Lovely Divin Alyssa, thank you so much for the 95 bits. Jen never, eh, Jen never says die art, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Ada Flavor, thank you so much for the 8 bits. Happy one year, uh, you old goofy goober. Correct, thank you. Galaxy Girl, thank you so much for the 60 bits. Theo, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Happy one year, Odie. Glad I found y'all heart. Jen, thank you so much for the 5 bits. Frizzy, thank you so much for the 22 bits. Jemmy, thank you so much for the 13 bits. Katie, thank you so much for the 1,000 bits. I am so excited for the Pendragon lecture, but even more so to be here with all of you. Congrats on the year, Odie. May there be many more milestones to come. I hope so, too. Katie, uh, that was Katie. Bup, 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 bup. Uh, Theo, thank you so much for giving a tier one sub to Gracie11037. Denny, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Happy stream of anniversary. Thank you. Pleasantly confused, Crystal. What's happening, Crystal? Thank you so much for resubscribing at tier one for seven months. So happy that I decided to check out your stream seven months ago. Uh, you're an amazing individual, and I love watching how much fun you have in stream in both the games you play and your chat. Thanks for the laughs. Absolutely. That's what I'm here for. Loop, thank you so much for the 500 bits. Uh, Biddies for Katie and Ori and Sin and this whole jamily. Odie, you're such a wonderful human. Thank you. We love you so much. That's a lie, but thank you. Katie, thank you so much for gifting a tier one sub to Evie Static. Uh, shout out to Evie Static, who uh, I commissioned to uh, remake my jorts because it's just a PNG that uh, Kat had found many, many, or, you know, a year ago, I guess now. And um, we just kind of like poorly photoshopped them for whatever. Um, the uh, one, one uh, it, it's uh, blue and then it's silver for two months, uh, or bronze for two months, silver for three months, six months is gold, nine months is Jolene Cujo, and then um, one year is Jotaro's pants, and then one and a half years will be Johnny Joestar's pants. Um, they look fucking sick. And then we'll figure out if we go from there. Um, but thank you so much, Katie and, and Evie. Uh, Ada Flavor, thank you so much for the 24 bits. Chappers, thank you so much for resubscribing to Tier 2 for 11 months. Chaps, you've been here forever. Oh, baby, thank you so much. Much love to you, my friend. Frizzy, thank you so much for the 20 bits. Oh, hell yeah. And Mims, thank you for the 100 bits. No, because you turned around and said you see memories of us all around you, and it fucking got me. It got me. I was almost crying watching it a second time after living it. And Pickle, thank you so much for gifting a tier three sub to Anigo Bloom. Anigo Bloom, welcome back to the OD fans. You know you never left, and that's why it is the exclusive tier three emote, I believe, of the Hobie Ho. And if you type in Hobie Ho with a uh, dash, Zuki will respond. And he'll say, let's go, because that's important. Uh, whew, I can't believe it's been so long already. Genuinely 35 minutes, yeah. So many insanely good moments since I found the Jamily. Happy one year. Thank you guys so much. Very exciting. And so within the next couple weeks, um, I believe like three-ish weeks, roughly, um, we'll start to see the one year badges, which will be a lot of fun. 
Um, it'll be a wonderful time. I'm very excited. But thank you so much, Denny, for the $10. You're too kind. You do not have to do that. Um, oh, God. Um, this is, this is uh, going to be a, 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 a wonderful day. I'm already sweating profusely. Uh, oh, no, my, my little fan died. I got to read this. I'm going to be drenched. Call me Jojolion, because I will be soft and wet. All right. So, uh, but, but, but Katie, thank you so much for the hydrate. Awesome. And then I, I left some of the more physical uh, redemption options. Uh, if I miss them, uh, mods, please, like, highlight your message to make sure that I see it. Um, oh, yeah, sorry to make you cry, but also... I did it right. This movie. Hmm. Colin is online. Thank you so much for uh, continuing the gift sub you got from Coda. Thank you so much. Welcome back to the Yoda fan. Another World Denny's. Thank you so much for gifting a sub to Zuki. Zuki Tanuki. Thank you so much for resubscribing for seven months. Zuki you, Tanuki. Bro, for absolutely everything you've done for all of us. Oh, well, thank you so much. Pickle. Oh, you didn't have to say thank you to Pickle. Pickle, thank you so much for the $50. You're too kind. Oh, my goodness. Y'all are amazing. Oh. Me and Zuki go do some squats. Four, two, three, four, five. Rebel! Oh, you bitch, what are you doing, Rebel? You, you shouldn't be spending your allowance like that. Oh my goodness, Rebel, thank you so much for gifting five tier one subs to the community. Aiden Fae Justice, Tylero, Raindrop, Dark and Wild, and Luke has arrived. Welcome back to the Odie fans. When you're here, have no fear, because Press Tilton is here for the moment. But you'll see him again, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. Uh, Mi Mibs! Ah! Thank you so much for gifting five tier one subs to the community. I gotta charge this, this fan, because, like, I'm dying. And inside, I'm crying. I'm moving too much. Oh my goodness. Uh, Mims, thank you so much for gifting a sub to um, some people or what have you. Okay. Can this charge, please? Ah! God! Y'all! Slow down for just a moment! Too much kindness! Okay. That's not how. What? What? Okay. Uh. Uh, shit. Uh, uh, Mims, thank you so much for gifting a sub to Mari, uh, Marie PNG, Mad Rock, Charper, Mr. Wizard250, and Rad Ghost. Lovely Demon Alyssa, thank you so much for gifting a tier one sub to E Junk Yet. And Theo, thank you so much for gifting five tier one subs to the community with, uh, to Hey It's Macaron, Lemon Drops, uh, Rodenticide, Mar Maria, and No Jung Shi. Uh, and Atlas Series, thank you so much for gifting a tier one sub to Tigress Lily 16. You guys are all too kind. You did not have to do that. And I am uh, eternally grateful and appreciative. Hopefully that will stay and I will be good. Oh my god, Zuki's cracked out. Um, Galaxy, Girl tier, uh, Galaxy Girl 20, thank you so much for gifting a tier one sub to Tyrex, uh, Tyrexion. 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 I have no idea. Did he fall behind the headboard? Zuki! Never and Winter did nothing wrong. Boy. Oh, thank you. Also, I realized that I didn't think about anything for dinner, so I may have to order food um, at some point. Uh, Electric Sin, thank you so much for gifting two tier one gift subs to Rich Elderly Lady and Stray Dryad. Thank you so much. You are too kind, son. You do not have to do that, bitch. Damn. Um, ah! Oh, slow down. Loop, thank you so much. Hey, Odie, can I DM you real quick on Discord? I wrote a thing. Yeah, read it. Fuck it. Send it to me. What, why? Yes. Um, oh my god. Uh, KDB, thank you so much for gifting five tier one gift subs to the community. Katie, you out of control. You did not have to do that. I love you so much. Uh, uh, tr uh, tr uh, thank you so much for gifting a tier one sub to uh, Traduci87, Little Miss Hero, Kira Mesa, Funkin, and Dingus Fries. Uh, welcome, welcome all back to the Odie fans. 
where we'll get into the lecture, I assure you. Uh, Gigi Snap, thank you so much for, for the 28 bits. Uh, Biddy's for your real age. We love you so much, Odie. Thank you for everything, truly. Thank you, you're too kind. Atlas Series, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Maybe I'm a nerd when I say this, but thank you so much for fostering such an amazing community. I truly found my jamily here, and I appreciate everyone so much. You're amazing, Odie. Thank you. You don't have to lie to me like that, but I appreciate it. And I'm just joking. It's just, sometimes it's hard to take compliments. Uh, Seiji Soldier, thank you so much for gifting a tier one gift sub to Kathy M. Jones. Kathy M. Jones, welcome back to the Odie fans. You know you never left. Uh, and uh, can we get a shout out for Seiji? Seiji has such an amazing channel. I fucking love hanging out and watching his stream. His Pokemon games are, are all over the place. His community is wonderful. He's got study halls, and I love hearing people and uh, doing all that. Chopper's DM, thank you so much for the uh, tier one sub. Loop, Loop, God damn it! Chopper's, thank you so much for giving two tier one gift subs to Nanomire and Dead in a Little Bit. Welcome back to the Odie fans, both of you guys, or to the Odie fans for the first time for Dead in a Little Bit. You'll enjoy it, I hope. This is chaotic. Uh, Loop, thank you so much for the $100. You crazy. You did not have to do that. Thank you so much. Very kind, and I guess I will shut up and accept the love. I have received the love. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Too kind. Make sure we get a shout out for Seiji, please. Uh, if we didn't already. Uh, uh, Ada, thank you so much for the 28 bits. Uh, Jemmy78, thank you so much for the 100 bits. You're a good egg and I'm proud of you. Egg. Uh, thank you so much, Jemmy. You didn't have to do that. Thank you. Katie, thank you so much for the 20 bits. Meta Heart. Oh, Too kind. Thank you so much. And Theo, thank you so much. Theo, bluster sales. Thank you so much for the 100 bits. None of us are too kind. We are the amount of kind that someone deserves, you bitch. Ah, oh, fuck you, Theo. Thank you. Too kind. And Chappers, thank you so much for the 150 bits. You're too kind. Chaps! I have so many things. I have every little thing I could ever want. But I keep this in my closet near when I get ready. So that I think of you every morning. I go, Chaps gave me that flag. And I enjoy it quite a bit. Um, I'm sorry, wait. Uh, uh, that being said, I hate to miss the Pendragon scene. I've been begging for it since the first time you ever mentioned these. And because we don't have enough characters to convey how much I'm fucking thankful I am for the same corner. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Hell yeah. You know, so I'm recording this right now. Um, I'll probably cut out some of this um, for like the thing. But I will be actually posting it to YouTube. Hence why there's none of the like special crazy redeems or anything, and I turned off all like the music stuff uh, specifically so that we could post it, because um, it'll be wonderful. So I got your back. It won't just be a vod, um, you know. But that doesn't mean you can't leave. Like you're allowed to leave, but you better be fucking lurking because I need the numbers. We're never gonna go pro if y'all if, if if we're not if we're not doing this. Uh, so you could hell yeah, GB GB GB. Uh, Atlas series, thank you so much for the thirty bits. You two kind of is very stressed about life, but this has made my funkin' day. Oh, hell yeah. You guys are amazing and too kind. Um, but, alas, poor Yorick. It is me, your boy. It is time to... Uh, I did remove end the stream because I knew somebody would fucking try to do it. I, I, I would have loved to have done it. I would have loved to have kept it, but I was like, I can't. I can't let it do it. Thanks for everything, Odie. I know I haven't been here super long, I think, but your stream's got me through a lot. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that, Humble Slytherin. Hell yeah, thank you. Steph, you're not allowed to lurk. Uh, Loop, thank you so much for the, uh, or no, for the highlight. Yes, you're you all hanging out with 60 viewers. Hell yeah, I haven't even done anything. Ori, thank you so much for the 1,000 bits. You're too kind. You do not have to do that. Thank you. I'm a little shit. Absolutely, baby. Yeah, but like, because guess what? I would let it end, and I'd go, congrats, there you go. I love it. It's wonderful. Um, so, it is time. Now, what I ended up choosing to do is that I had the hardest time trying to figure out how to like set it all up because I had read all of these books. Well, yeah, but I mean live, you know? 
just a guy with his dicks out, you know? So, first and foremost, a theme that I want to make sure is important is that Neva Winter did nothing wrong. Neva Winter did nothing wrong and is the best character in the series, hands down. First and foremost. Um, and I hope that uh, this goes okay. Um, it might end up going long. If we really have to, we'll do uh, a part two. But uh, I have no idea. I haven't practiced it. It's all good. Uh, one sec, I gotta shit talk my mod chat. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Never winter. That one's for all my, my, my crew. So, um, what we are gonna do, the one thing that we're gonna do is that as a helpful call to attention, is that I'm gonna go, ho be ho, and I want everyone in chat to type let's go or type the hobie dash ho command like which is just hobie ho and then zuki will respond absolutely dead absolutely so i'm a bully it's what i do i'm a bad guy it's what i do see that's okay there we go that's a lot better i was going to keep my whiteboard but instead i decided to start and then got incredibly sidetracked by Google Slides. So, uh, Atlas, thank you so much for the 100 bits. I gotta go shower and sleep because school in the morning but sending lots of love. Thank you so much, too kind. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go, all right, are we ready to hop in this flume? Hobie ho! And then everyone's gonna go, let's go, but there's a slight delay, so like, everyone's, everyone's there. Oh, hell yeah. Boom! Pendragon. A demon gets ratioed into oblivion. A stream of mercy presentation by myself, Oedipus Rex. You can catch me live at Oedipus Re or twitch.tv slash Oedipus Rex. What's that? I don't know. Uh, what is a pen dragon? Okay. So. Pen dragon, um, which is uh, a wonderful little uh, couple of books. For, uh, we'll grab stuff from the lore vault. Is does it actually? I believe it actually has a name, like the the series itself. Um, because like I've seen it like on on the wiki. Uh, just a second. I want to make sure I have it right because I didn't. I didn't put it in. Um, but 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 but. Uh, Pen Dragon Journal of an Adventure Through Space and Time commonly known as Pendragon, is a series of 10 young adult science fiction and fantasy novels by American author D.J. McHale, published from 2002 to 2009. Um, well, I'll just really quickly read the very quick uh, Wikipedia synopsis, because uh, I will uh, be continuing to explain it. Because, um, like, the, my opinions are what are truly most important. Um... Just a moment, I'm getting angry texts. Send them love. Uh, uh, ba -ba -ba. It chronicles the adventures of Bobby Pendragon, an American teenager who discovers that he must travel through time and space to prevent the destruction of 10 territories, critical times, and locations throughout the universe. The series has sold over a million copies. The general premise of each of these books is that Bobby is dealing with a battle over a particular territory with, uh, with your boy Big SD. Um, or SD card, as I like to call him. Um, you don't have to take notes, no. Uh, but if you do have questions, again, um, either highlight it in chat or like uh, bits or, or don't know, text to speech, all that, all that bullshit. Whatever you want to do. Um, I'll do my best to see it. And if I miss stuff, mods, yell at me. Cool. Um, so uh, the way that uh, these books are, let me pull up my presentation again. I have way too many like tabs open. So uh, here, I have my presentation, and I'm sorry that I'm small, um, but we can swap to the other um, when it's necessary. So, uh, there are 10 books in the series, um, chronicling starting when Bobby is 14 and ending, I believe, around when he's 19, 18 or 19. Um, we start with uh, The Merchant of Death, then move into The Lost City of Far, The Neverward, The Reality Bug, 
Blackwater, The Rivers of Zadar, Quillen Games, Pilgrims of Rain, Raven Rise, and then finally Soldiers of Hala. Um, one interesting thing that I wanted to point out that I had seen um, when I was reading some of this, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, there was something else. Well, yeah, so um, there's a, uh, the, the basic structure of each book is that there's a turning point on a specific territory that um, we need to figure out what the turning point is and which way it needs to go for the flow of things. Um, the, uh, there is a lot of, um, a, a lot of different things that are important, um, that, like, it deals with themes of cultural homogenization, social inequality, discrimination, and totalitarianism. Um, sometimes there is some, uh, race-based conflict, although it's, um, it's hard to describe because it's not, like, as adult as it would need to be, but it's, it's, I'll explain. These are young adult books. Um. KDB, thank you so much for giving a sub to Ion Shark. Ion, welcome back. How about you spin that golden ratio right into this chat and say hello? Thank you. I think you already did say hello, so I'm just I'm just behind. Um, so uh, these are going to be um, ooh, and they have terminology here. I am creating this presentation. I have bare bones of it as we go because I ran out of time, even though I had months to prepare for this. I didn't start until last night. Um, so what is a pen drag? Uh, basic uh, structure of the book. Uh, he wrote it over the course of seven years. Um, it, the structure of all of these books. Meta, thank you so much for the one bits. If you saw this message earlier, I couldn't spend money. And I said I couldn't spend money. No, you didn't. Okay. Thank you so much, fucking, fucking much, Odie, for making us laugh, for entertaining us, for playing games with us, and for creating amazing Jamily. I couldn't imagine what this past year would have been like without your channel or the Discord server. I've made so many great memories with all of you, and I know there will be more to come. I'm proud to be a motherfucker. Hell yeah, OG. Hell yeah. Thank you. You all good. Absolutely. No worries, Galaxy Girl. Have a good one. Um, and if, if you end up having to dip out and I don't say goodbye, please don't take it personally. It's just a lot going on, and I, I, may, not, I may or may not be able to see it. There's no favorites or anything. Um, Snake, that is correct. Um, so, the squad. Hashtag goals. So, who are the, uh, the, the bit players in this? Um, so, in the Pendragon series, we have Bobby Pendragon, who you'll see here on the left. Bobby Pendragon is a 14-year-old boy of an athletic build who lives in Stony Brook, Connecticut, um, in, uh, on Second Earth, or rather Earth, uh, around 2002. Um, it typically, uh, Second Earth takes place when the books were written. So, you know, post 9-11, but, you know, still things. Yes, in Connecticut. Um, right near New York. Um, you know, real close to New York and whatnot. Uh, so, uh, what's really cool is that, uh, so Bobby, um, at the beginning of the series is 14, and, um, the story structure of the books are written, um, as journals. So, um, we are reading events that technically have already happened to Bobby, and he's writing them down and sending them. Who is he sending them to? Well, he is sending them to Mark Diamond, not pictured, because they don't have a picture of Mark. Um, Mark is, uh, considered, he is a, uh, smaller kid, uh, same age as Bobby, who has, like, a messy mop top, brown hair, he wears glasses, he's always eating carrots to help improve his eyesight, and he, uh, he stutters when he's nervous, so he stutters all the time. Um, not a diary, a journal that was explicitly written for them. Um, Mark is, Mark is hands down, like, begets, like, the biggest glow up. The biggest glow up. Although I will say, I, I, I will rank, like, who, who, who I'm down bad for. And to be clear, I read this series when I was 14. Like, when I was a teenager and a kid. So, we're all good. And when they're adults and all that blah, blah, blah bullshit. But we'll, we'll rank everybody. Because first of all, St. Dane, a baddie. The boy. Although ne it's never winter. It's always never winter. She's just got that, like put together she's just mean and i you know i'm a sucker for mean so uh bobby pendragon and mark diamond are best friends they have been best friends since they were kids uh bobby is pretty popular he's on the basketball team um and he is the epitome of a, of, a, of of just like a upper middle class white kid um to be blunt that's just that's just it um he's got you know his mom dad uh, his younger sister and their dog, uh, Golden Retriever, and um, it's all good. 
uh, Mark Diamond uh, has his two uh, his two parents that he lives with, um, but he likes just like you know he plays video games and he's on his computer a lot and whatnot. He's cool. Finally, Courtney Chetwin. Courtney goddamn motherfucking Chetwin. Courtney Chetwin is Bobby's primary love interest throughout the entire sh- uh, series. Um, he, she is described as um, she's uh, uh, very athletic. She is. Um, uh, just around Bobby's height and whatnot, same age and everything. They've been um, athletic rivals forever. Like they're always competing, but in like a fun rivalry um, sort of way to kind of push each other. And um, she is described as having um, very long, pretty, I believe, brown hair, and she has gray eyes. Um, I don't remember what color Bobby's eyes are because I don't give a shit. I uh, Bobby's boring. Bobby's whiny, especially in the first book. Um, and so the three of them are all, they all go to Stony Brook High School. Um, well, at least Bobby used to before his, his house disappeared and whatnot. We'll probably end up spending a bit more time kind of setting up the scene and kind of describing different people and kind of taking breaks and kind of speeding through the books because we want like the cool shit. Um, you know, I, I, I'm just, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best here. So, um, but that's, uh, that is the, the core squad. Um, and very rarely are all three of them in the same place at the same time. Uh, it doesn't happen often. Most of the time, we see Bobby doing his adventures and shit, and then Courtney and Mark will be reading the journals. Um, which, in the books themselves, is... Oh, I had Queen in Itinerant Meddler in there. Um, there's a text difference between when we are in... So, I don't know if y'all can see like the text... And then it'll be like it's a different font, which is always a good way to like know. Uh, If you're going to avoid spoilers, no worries. This book series is over a decade old. Almost. It's actually the first. This book is 20 years old as of this year. Um, To give you an idea, uh, I will say if you are interested in reading these books, you need to push through the first couple because they are written from the point of view of a 14 year old. And it sounds like it's written by a 14 year old, which is really good for immersion fact, uh, aggravating after you just finished reading, you know, Stormlight Archive series. Uh, the beginning of this book starts off, it says Den Duron, and says, I hope you're reading this, Mark. Heck, I hope anybody's reading this, because the only thing that's keeping me going to, from, to, from going totally off my nut right now is getting this all down on paper so that someday, when it's all over, it'll help prove that I'm not a total whack job. You see, two things happened yesterday that changed my life forever. Uh... To just give a quick last little description, because I believe it's important. The first was that I finally kissed Courtney Chetwind. Yes, THE Courtney Chetwind, of the bites her lower lip when she's thinking, stares right into your heart with her deep gray eyes, looks unbelievable in her volleyball uniform, and always smells a little like Rose's fame. Yeah, I kissed her. It was a long time coming, and it finally happened. Woohoo! The second thing was that I was launched through a wormhole called a flume and got jacked across the universe to a medieval planet called Denduron that's in the middle of a violent civil war. But back to Courtney. So, to give you an idea of how Bobby kind of talks and thinks, he's very clearly a 14-year-old boy, and he goes through the later processes of puberty throughout the book, and we see that explored through some of his relationships, like with Lore. um, Just Lore, actually. um, Who is better than Courtney, in my opinion. She's our warrior uh, queen. That being said, there is one incredibly important character that I have not included. I would like to reiterate that Pendragon is a series a demon gets ratioed into oblivion. If you've read the books, you understand and know exactly what I mean by this, and I am very, very happy with myself because it is funny. St. Dane, Big Doucherino, that's it. Saint Dane is a demon of sorts. Uh, Saint Dane is the uh, antagonist of the entire series. Uh, he has ice cold blue eyes um, that are always seen like whenever he shows his form, it's always his like ice blue eyes that are like they make you feel cold inside and it's it's painful. Uh, big douche nozzle. He's the worst. Uh, it sucks. Big fat stinky ass. Um, Saint Dane goal is to um, essentially uh, cause uh, these territories that are at, are, um, 
that are at tipping points um uh f- from what are the, I forget what the exact word that they use are uh uses is it tipping point it might be on the territories um I mean I know what his real real goal is but you know it's not um Oh, the turning point, the focusing turning point, not tipping point, turning point of where things can go one way or the other. Tipping point, turning point, it's all the same. Um, so uh, what that really means is when it comes to St. Dane, and I'll, um, I'll swap back here so you guys can see me as I bitch about him. Um, St. Dane is the most powerful villain that they could possibly think of. Um, there are uh, quite a few different territories, uh, worlds, if that's easier to think of, um, like planets. And um, he, his goal is to conquer them, and he does so by focusing on uh, the evil in men. And most of the time, he doesn't actually get his hands dirty. He is always finding a way to wiggle himself into political power or influential power and give the right push, the right nudge, the right time to make people give in to their eviler, greedier instincts um, and whatnot, and using that to cause chaos of set, essentially chaos. He believes that he is fully righteous in his cause, and that Bobby is actually on the wrong side. So, what's a territory? Great question you didn't ask. Uh, four months ago, I wrote on this whiteboard when I started this. <clears throat> Don't know how much you could see. So, it's me. Uh, we have, uh, the, the, there are 10 territories uh, in total. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, actually it's 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Did I forget one? No, 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, I did. I did forget one. Um, there, there are 10. So, uh, I forgot um, Elon. Uh, so, uh, we have uh, Denduron, which is a uh, medieval-like planet. Um, it, we'll, we'll go into it in detail in the first book. I'll, I'm just giving a very quick overview on all of these. Um, it's all utopia. Absolutely. Um, so, Denduron is a medieval planet. I believe it has three suns. Um, and uh, the, the main turning point there involves the uh, uh, Malago uh, tribe as well as the Bedouin. Um, we'll go into that in a bit, but um, and they're more of like a feudal, like you know, sword bat, like uh, on like a sword and shield on a, on a on like knights and stuff. Are they like quadrants or actual planets? Uh, planets ish. It, it's hard to describe. Uh, Coral is a fully water-based territory where there really isn't any land. Um, like society is built on these massive, insane floating barges. Um, and it takes place mostly on Gralian, which is an uh, agricultural one. Coral's the coolest world, full stop. Uh, Earth is actually split into three separate territories. Uh, there is Second Earth, which is current day, although for us it's not, so 2002, uh, Bobby's current day. First Earth, which is set in 1937, more or less. And then Third Earth, which is in year 5310, I believe. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's in the year 5310. I'm really, really sure that's the case. Um, uh, there is, um, there are 10 territories, um, but, you know, not that, not, there's not 10 worlds, because, like, it, it's weird, it's weird to describe. Um, there's also, uh, Elong, which is a, like, rainforesty planet, um, that has Gars and Klees. Um, hey, Gally. Uh, Gars are humans that are basically, like, cavemen. And the Klees are, um, uh, sometimes by, like, the, uh, they are basically, like, giant jungle cats that have the ability to be bipedal. Um, and they are the dominant species on the planet. Uh, big furry energy. Black waters when shit get, like actually reality bug is when shit gets real. Hence the reality bug. Um, so there's that. Velox is uh, a planet that has uh, life light pyramids, which is like advanced technology for like um, think like a, a, a VR holodeck 
where uh, I think uh, SAO with the nerve gear. It's like that. Um, it's like that. Like that's what they do on that world. Uh, Zada is a um, desert planet, um, very similar to like Egypt kind of vibes, um, where there are the um, Baku, uh, who are. Um, this is the this is the one world where like 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 race is kind of a thing. So I'm I'm gonna do it. Um, I'm gonna use the words that DJ McHale uses, and if it's inappropriate or anything, please let me know. Um, but the uh, the Baku are um, they live on the surface of the planet, and they are uh, traditionally darker skinned. So a uh, variety of like uh, you know like like uh, darker skin tones, black, brown, whatnot. Um, are they? Uh, Lore is the traveler there. Uh, we'll get into her. She's she's fucking wonderful. She's my favorite, hands down. Ooh, although Vos Vader's really good. Well, blah, 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 blah. getting ahead of myself. Um, that being said, there is uh, then there's also the Rokador, who are basically pasty and whatnot because they live underground. Um, and uh, we'll get into the dynamics and everything there. Um, that are a little, it's actually really really interesting. Not like weird, but like trust me. Okay, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, but 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 there's uh, Zada, and then there's Quillen is uh, a a world that looks strangely a lot like Second Earth if IKEA owned everything. Um, it is run by mostly run by a company known as Block uh, uh, Quillen, and I, I we'll get in there in a bit. But they're owned by Block, um, and they are really into betting on wonderful, magical, insane, crazy games. Um, really fun. It's not fun. Um, with Ramudi. Uh, oh, R.I.P. Ramudi. Um, we then have Ibarra, which is a tropical paradise um, planet uh, where... <laughs> Wash your two bolts. Um, is a tropical paradise where people kind of look like they're wearing modern clothes, but they're just chilling on the beach. It's a good time. We love Ibarra. Um, and then I think that's it. I think Ibarra... Am I missing any? Uh... Coral, Tenduron, Elong, Ibarra, Quillen, Velox, Zoda, Ibarra, first, second, third, Earth. Yeah. So that's it. That's all the worlds. So that's all the territories, all the worlds. We'll get more into it and whatnot um, as we uh, continue on. So um, the uh, last bit of information so that we can kind of start speeding through the rest of these books, because I don't want us to be here all fucking day. Um, also, at some point, I need to remember to order food. Um, I'm sure I will remember. There is travelers. The entire thing is that they are traveling. What is a traveler? Great question. A traveler is um, a set of people that are the designated uh, representative of that world, and they have the ability to use the flumes to travel from one territory to the next. Um, and their uh, goal, is it backwards? No. Um, and their goal is to, um, it scared the shit out of me though, I'll be honest. It scared me real good. Um, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. uh, their main goal is to prevent the turning points and stop St. Dane. That's what they do. Um, there typically is a, um, uh, this book takes place where the, uh, older generation of travelers have trained and are passing down and letting their new travelers know that they are now travelers. Um, good shit. Um, what is a flume? A flume is a rocky cave portal that when you go up to it and say the name of a territory, it should spring to life with uh, beautiful like uh, like crystals and like colors and uh, sweet music that doesn't have any specific melody, but just generally pleasant. Um, and you just sort of, sort of become weightless and travel through the flume to wherever it's going, um, to the territory. Um, the, uh, the way to find a flume is to look for a star symbol. Um, <clears throat> like that, you know, super easy, makes sense. Uh, just find that carved on like a door or a wall or a rock or something. And they're, they're typically hidden out of the way that normal everyday people will not find them. So flume is great. Um, and with that, I think we're actually ready to, to, to like, to go hard. 
So, Merchants of Death. Uh, let me pop right here, just a moment. The Merchants of Death uh, is quite a wonderful little book. Uh, this is our introduction. Uh, Bobby, uh, as the beginning of the journals will suggest, um, I, I'm not exactly sure how I want to structure what happens to each people um, on this. Thank you so much, Jen. Appreciate it. You amazing. You're too kind. And you're right. I should just fucking order food. I'm just lazy. I want to be tall. Um, so, how do we want to do this? Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll talk about Bobby, and then we will talk about the main plot, and then we will talk about Mark and Courtney, or in some capacity of that. Because uh, it's really hard for me to figure out what information is important, what information is not important. Um, Bobby, on the night of his uh, semi, like, semi -cha like, semi-final championships, it's a big game. He kisses Courtney Chetwind because he runs home before, like, he runs home to change into his basketball stuff before he heads to the school where his family and, uh, like, his, his parents and his younger sister, Sharon, have already left to go. Um, he decides to run back home, change, say hi to Marley, his dog, and then, like, go back to the game. Um, as, he, as he's at home, he uh, hears a knock at the door, and standing at the door is Courtney Chetwin, his rival and whatnot, love interest, potentially, and whatnot. Um, and essentially, um, they are standing at the door, and she says that, I felt like I needed to come here today. I felt like I needed to see you and talk to you, because I felt like I might not see you in a long, for a long time. And he's like, that's really weird. I don't know why you'd say that. And they end up sharing a kiss. That kiss is then interrupted by Press Tilton, Chad Extraordinaire, the coolest guy in the world. Press Tilton is the uncle every kid wish they had. You know, it's your mom's other brother, the good one. And it's, it's just a, a, a top tier level five vibe. Um, let me order. I'm not getting chow mein again because they keep fucking me on the chow mein. No, I'll pay two dollars. Come directly to me. It's worth. Okay, uh, how much tall are we talking? Ah, uh, you know, a little bit. Uh, so Press Tilton is uh, his uh, his uncle, and Bobby has always done really cool stuff with his uncle. Like his uncle always takes him. He they go skydiving. They'll go scuba diving. Um, he's always like he's got a cool motorcycle. He's always doing some weird shit, um, some uh, fun stuff. And um, I know, I know, Evie, you right. Fuck. Uh, Okay, um, ordered food, we're good. Um, always doing some really uh, really cool and amazing stuff. So Press Tilton, uh, his Uncle Press shows up and goes, Hey Bobby, how you doing? Hey Courtney, great to see you. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, uh, but uh, I need your help. There's some people that need our help, Bobby, and I need you to come with me. And Bobby's like, what do you mean? I have a basketball game. And uh, Uncle Press is like, not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Bobby's like, cool. Bobby decides to hop on the motorcycle and go with him. Uh, he's recognized, uh, he, like, Uncle Press has been real quiet about what they're actually doing. Um, him and Uncle Press head to uh, the Bronx to an abandoned subway station. Uh, and Bobby's like, what the fuck is going on, my guy? But he's like, 14. So he's like, what the frig, Dad? Uncle P, you, Uncle P what's up? And... Um, Uncle Press says, there's some people that need our help. Um, it's going to be hard to explain, but you are a traveler, and we are going to need to go somewhere a bit far away. And this is the way that we have to do it. Uh, while they are there, we meet our villain, St. Dane, in the form of a cop, because St. Dane can shapeshift. St. Dane has the ability to look and sound like any other person in the world. So which means that there is a constant running theme of paranoia that gets worse and worse um, later in the books, more so of like, who could be St. Dane? Wh how, where is St. Dane? How is he running this? Where is he? Um, also, thank you so much, Sal. Appreciate it. Um, and so uh, lot, lots of whatever, where uh, there's a, a police officer who's like, hey, you need to stop. And he's like, no. And Uncle Press gets real serious and says, Bob Bobby, go run in there and yell Denduron. Um, 
the cop ends up pulling out a gun. It's, you know, you may see the steel, uh, the blue eyes. And uh, we realize that that was St. Dane. And he's there to, like, stop the travelers from fucking with his shit. Uh, Bobby runs into the cave, shouts Denduron, and travels through this flume. He is then dumped out in a cave. And there are some rags on the floor. Press shows up just a minute later with a slight bullet wound, I believe. Um, but overall, okay. And says, well, we're here. Um, we're on a different world, a territory called Denduron. And there is a turning point that St. Dane is going to tip and cause more chaos. And we need to save and protect these people. Um, they put on the rags because um, a big rule, the most important rule... Uh, Snake, no, they do not. They do not always... Like, he can change his eye color at will. But typically, um, St. Dane is very conceited and very hyper-egotistical. And him and Bobby will have a lot of verbal spats as well as physical spats um, throughout the series where if, if Bobby figures out... Typically, St. Dane actually reveals himself to Bobby as a power play. Typically through flashing his eye color. Typically is the case. Um, a lot of times he'll just go up to him and talk to him and uh, fuck his ass up. Um, so, um, I'm taking way too long on this. Merchant of Death, uh, they end up at Denduron. And um, they have to wear the rags. Because the most important rule is that you cannot mix the territories. There is absolutely no mixing of territories. You are not allowed to bring something from one territory and bring it to another because that affects the natural flow of the world. That being said, the way that the flumes work is that um, through powers that we do not yet understand, travelers, when they go through there, hey, Alex, when they go through the flume, the flume will put them at the right place and time they need to be there at. Um, and that's kind of like where we're not really sure exactly how that works. I am. But, you know, they show up where they need to be. It always just kind of works out. You just trust it that there's, there's a reason for them to be there. Um, and if that's where they're going. Uh, they end up, uh, the one thing I forgot to mention, and um, a lot of this is setting up base stuff that'll be like we can transplant it across the different worlds so we can save time. Um, St. Dane um, doesn't like when the travelers come and fuck with this shit. Wolfie, thank you so much for the 50 bits. Happy stream anniversary. I'm not late. I'm insanely proud of you and the growth you've achieved in a year, and I'm very proud to be an uh, Odie fan. You have built such a wonderful community, and I am grateful to know someone as amazing as you. Uh, you deserve all the growth and achievements you've attained. It worked, you worked for it. We are also proud of your heart. Thank you so much, Wolfie. You didn't have to do that. Appreciate you. Um, so the um, he guards all of these with what are known as quigs. Um, he will have a quig or a set of quigs at every single um, flume gate. Um, which is typically how you know that you're finding a flume gate if you suddenly encounter quigs. Uh, the quigs on Denduron uh, don't show up at first as there's a small toboggan sled. One note, Bobby on every world will keep his boxer brief, or his boxers. That's his one line. Is he's like, I don't want to lose my bit of earth. And also I can't like, I still know that I'm sane if I got my, if I got my boxers. All about this with his fucking boxers okay um so um what ends up like that's his big thing always important that he keeps those we end up um there's like as they're going down like on the sled they're actually at the top of this really high snowy mountain and there's like like a big village down below they go sled down it and there's all these jagged rocks which they then find out these giant jagged rocks are actually teeth of these yellow-eyed quig rock bears um, that are really fucking nasty, and at one point Bobby has to, like, stab one through the throat. It's real nasty. Um, they, they will have to kill people at some point. It's unfortunate, but uh, they do their best not to, to just knock people out. Um, the, the, the main uh, uh, thing of quigs is that they have yellow eyes. So that's typically how you can tell that they're there, and they will attack travelers. Um, and they're fast as fuck. So, um, they head down, and they enter into the Milago village, which is kind of made of like stone huts and stuff uh, with a bunch of like really thin kind of smaller workers that are just look, look exhausted. They're maimed. And um, this is where we are introduced to um, the, uh, the big thing on Denderon, the Milago versus the Bedouin. The Milago tribe are uh, miners. They work in these mines uh, getting glaze. Um, glaze is this like blue emerald thing that um, can be found in the mines. 
and um, they need to mine a certain amount of it every day for the Bedouin. Um, the problem and the risk with this is that there is a material known as tack in these mines. And tack is this, like, uh, like think like um, dynamite clay. Okay, like dynamite clay is, is the best way to describe it. Um, where even a small amount, if you were to go and roll into a ball and throw it, it'd be a huge explosion. So tunnels collapse, shit happens, people die all the time. Um, the, when trying to figure out where the big turning point is um, for it, is that the Bedouin um, are these like large, proud knights. Um, and we actually end up meeting um, as they arrive there. One thing to note is that all the other people speak a different language, um, and Bobby can't hear them, but through Traveler powers, as we start to find out, the Travelers have some abilities. One of them is essentially a babblefish. C4, exactly. Um, like a, like a, 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 like the babblefish where it goes into their ear. It doesn't go into their ear, but like they can communicate and be understood as if they spoke the language, and they will understand as if they speak their native tongue. So uh, it's a built-in translator that just is automatic so that we can just keep, you know, moving on. Um, pretty, uh, pretty friggin' cool. Um, with that, we end up, um, I'm like running, I'm tired. Um, the, uh, we meet the, we meet two travelers while we're here. We meet Lore, who is, uh, Fucking amazing. Lore is such a goddamn badass. She is a Batu um, from... Uh, wait, uh, ba -ba -ba. Let me see if I can get a picture real quick. Ba -ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba -ba. I think this is the only, like, official picture that we have. Technically. That's an official picture. There's some, like... Really cool fan art. It's spelt L-O-O-R. Oh, thank you so much. Is that a host? Yes, thank you. Okay. There we go. All right. I only shut that off just because I don't want to get claimed on the video. So I forgot about raids. Or uh, I did forget about raids. Let me update that real quick. Shit. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for the raid. Um, not mad at all, to be clear. It's just more of like, oh, shit, I got to update that. Hey, Drakana, thank you so much. Um, oh, how many hydrates did you guys just give me? Can someone, can you guys count it and let me know? Because I know I'm behind um, while I update this. Uh, yeah, so Lore is really cool. Um, she, like, grows with them as well. Like, uh, uh, she's a, uh, a, a, a ripped warrior. Um, full stop. It's very, like, that's, that's very much, like, um, she's badass. She uses a stav um, and is really fucking cool. And quite frankly, good. So, no, no. There we go. That's that. That'll be the raid. Okay. Um, five hydrates. Okay. So, uh, we meet uh, Lore. Um, who uh, we meet Lore and her mother Osa. Osa being the older traveler. Uh, and uh, Lore being the new traveler from Zada, she has already been made aware that she is a traveler, and she's a bit more experienced. Like, she's a fighter, she can handle herself, um, and intimidates the shit out of Bobby, who doesn't know what he's doing. Make yourself. Yeah, okay. So, um, she's very badass, very cool, uh, sick, and, um, quite frankly, my biggest crush, hands down. I love it, thank you so much, get some sleep, and thank you so much. And your art was fucking amazing, by the way, thank you so much, it was so good, it hits the banner. Uh, I just was very busy today, and I'm like, I can't respond to people, because, like, I don't have time, uh, but I, I did my best. Uh, let me see if I can get a picture of Alder, because it would be good to see him. He is, like, your eponymous, like... Honestly, he kind of looks like Sal and Matthew Mercer. Um, that's Alder. Um, so Osa is her mother. Alder, uh, Alder has a um, has a what do you call it? Um, I don't even know how to describe it. 
he has someone that's older than him who's already passed in some capacity um, and has passed on the mantle. Um, they, uh, the, the, the big thing that they realize that's fucked up, Alder is a Bedouin knight, but he's a good guy because he's a traveler. Um, and it's a wonderful time. Uh, they are all working together, and it's like uh, Alder is, um, Alder is uh, Bobby's rock throughout the series. It is his solid, like, if I need you, you got me. I always picture him as like a, a big, beefy farm boy. You know, like it's Kenny. It's Kenny. Kenny is Alder. Like, is is just he's a knight. He's he does good. His heart is big, and he's ready to love. Dad, Miota, you got it. Ooh. 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 Oh hell yeah! Thank you. Um, with that, the problem where we introduce Saint Dane is that there is a chief knight Templar of some sort who uh, looks fucking mean and nasty on a black horse and black armor and shit. And it turns out that the Milago need to weigh the glaze against one of the workers that gets picked out. So they put them on a scale and you need to get this miner's weight and glaze and that you're not allowed to choose somebody who's missing a limb because that's cheating. Um, because St. Dane makes the rules. Um, as they don't make enough, they end up killing the one guy and the main knight looks directly at Bobby, flashes his eyes blue to let him know that he's there. Uh, real fun, real good, real fucking evil. Um, they they continue to go through, and uh, the big thing is uh, the the core of the Merchant of Death is that uh, basically the um, they they need to um, they need to figure out uh, like Press and Uncle Press gets injured when like they kind of the scuffle happens, and Saint Dane takes Uncle Press to the Bedouin Castle. The Bedouin castle is set into the side of a cliff, and it's really fucking massive and cool. Think, like, elves and shit. Um, and they live, like, in luxury. It's kind of fucked up. And ultimately, uh, Bobby realizes, like, we need to go get him. Um, and while Bobby was sleeping in a mine, um, he, uh, or actually, um, Lore is uh, disgusted through most of the book and, um, like, by Bobby, because, like, he's just unimpressive. Um, what ultimately happens is that uh, there's clearly a revolution brewing between the Milago and the Bedouin because the, the Milago are going to rise up, gamers. And um, that's what they want to do. Uh, and so what they end up doing is there's, um, there's a, like this little like crazy guy named Figus who is one of the Milagos. He's dirty. He's always playing around with tack and stuff. And he uh, wants to sell tack. Um, and, uh, they kind of realized that, um, the, the, uh, Malago intend to use these newfound tack mines to somehow find a way to basically make a bomb and blow it up. And the way they do that is because Bobby breaks the rules. Here it! Mark Diamond and Courtney Chetwind, uh, a uh, after Bobby w ran off, to, with his uncle Press, Courtney Chetwin went to the game. Bobby never showed up. Um, and had, Bobby's parents weren't there. It was really weird. The next day, Bobby's not at school. And uh, both Mark and Courtney are a bit concerned. And so they go to Bobby's house. Bobby's house no longer exists. It is just an empty lot. And most people don't appear to really remember. Like, they kind of remember Bobby a little bit, maybe. But, like, they think it's weird. Like, we definitely remember him, but, like, there's no records. They end up going to the police, talking to a police sergeant and whatnot, and, like, there's no records. There is no records of a Pendragon family living there or living in this town or Bobby going to that school, even though they know Bobby went to the school. Everyone just assumes his family left town like a gazebo. Exactly. Uh, and whatnot, and it's trashy, crusty, and dirty. Goddamn right. Um, just fucking gone. Um, I'm actually, I'm going to put this down so I can sit for a minute because I've just been standing. Um, and I keep thinking about my food. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> we end up seeing, hey, Lamau Broccoli, thank you so much. I got to change that one too, damn it. Thank you so much for joining up. Welcome to the motherfuckers. You're one of us now. Um, I just got to change it so it's not the copyrighted stuff. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, completely gone. Um, in the middle of the night, um, actually the night before that, like, like that night where Bobby disappears, 
Um, Mark Diamond is sitting in bed um, after staying up too late reading comic books and shit when a mysterious woman appears on top of him in his bed. Um, she is uh, a, uh, it is uh, Osa, Lore's mother, um, kind of standing at the edge of the bed, kind of like gets on top of the bed is how I kind of remembered it as a kid. Um, and uh, Osa goes and says, Mark Diamond, that is your name, correct? And he's like, uh, uh, yeah, and he's stuttering like crazy because he's uh, a massive stutterer. Um, he ends up uh, panicking and is unsure of what to do, how to do it, and all that, or, you know, like, what's happening. And she hands him a ring. She gives him a ring that looks like this. Okay, so we're going to pop off of this back to this. It looks like that. That is the ring. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If, if, dude, if Osa was on, mm. Anyway, the, the, uh, <clears throat> Mark ends up getting the ring and says, Bobby will, uh, like, you need, Bobby wanted you to hold on to this. And he's like, okay, don't know what that means. He's like, you're an acolyte. He's like, I don't know what the fuck that means. Bobby has been writing letters or, uh, journal entries that he is able to say, he puts his ring on the ground because Bobby has a matching ring and goes, Mark Diamond. And the ring will, or he goes, Second Earth. The ring will open up really big uh, with music, kind of like a mini flume. And it looks and sounds kind of like a flume. You drop the journal in and then the ring will shrink. Meanwhile, which is how Bobby or how um, Mark and Courtney end up like getting together and whatnot, like, like as like partners in this, uh, where all of a sudden music starts playing. Mark's ring is just growing in his pocket and he panics and he's like running to the bathroom and shit as a journal pops out. And like, they've already like investigated what happened to Bobby. Where is he? You know, it's really weird. And he gets letters saying that he's in Denderon. He's on another planet. Like, he's in another territory, another world or something, but he's alive. It's him. Um, and uh, that's the basic gist of the Martin Courtney stuff for this one. Um, the main thing where Bobby breaks the rules is that Bobby asks, in order to help bust St. Dane out of there, or not, uh, in order to rescue Press Tilton, um, Bobby uh, asks if they can go to the flume in the Bronx with like a care package of stuff, like a flashlight, um, uh, uh, Green Bay. Uh, I'm trying to think now. I'm like I have like the wiki up too because I'm like trying to like remember some of it of like what they uh, do. Uh, they end up. Um, uh, they. Uh, they they oh sorry. Alder and Lore try to rescue Press from the pa from the castle, armed with a backpack full of tools brought from Bobby's home. Um, Second Earth to make the job easier, despite the warning. Um, the during this raid, while they go do this, Bobby figures out that like the Bedouin live in a, like a luxurious, lazy lifestyle uh, where they relax on pillows, eat. They're attended by like uh, like like Novins, another race of people. They are also technologically light years ahead of the Malago. Like they are very clearly exploiting the shit out of these people, and it's fucked. Um, and uh it's it's a good time like and they have like artificial light which could be really useful running water dumb waiters stuff that would be helpful in the mines and whatnot um they end up uh ultimately like getting uh press out of there and they discover that figus uh, the the merchant has been selling this tack um and um while bobby was sleeping in a mine ventilation shaft before the rescue attempt um Figgis had stolen a flashlight from Bobby's bag. Um, when they return, they would discover that Figgis has been selling the tack, uh, uses a, and as a weapon to like strike back against the Bedouin. Um, the final component to build the weapon is by like, um, or, or, and probably most of the village too, to be honest, is the battery and the switch from the flashlight as real like mega C4, like nutso C4 um with all this tack like an obscene amount of it like enough that like if you touch it wrong it'll blow up and you'll die um the plan is to present the tack bomb to them during the transfer ceremony when they receive the glaze disguised as a rather large minecart of glaze destroying the rest of them with smaller amounts um they end up stopping the chief miner from doing it i'm just going to kind of read this because like uh general I'll, I'll try to use this when i can't remember shit um all the way because like it's 10 fucking books and this is this is the most boring one um 
they 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 get everyone to evacuate the castle. They stop the miner from doing it from from doing it and whatnot. Um, and they have to like get uh, like uh, Bobby and Laura have to get rid of the bomb somehow. Um, they fight off a bunch of quigs that were in the pen inside the stadium in the castle. Um, and they like fight some of them. Um, right before Relin set the bomb, this is like the the main miner, the chief miner. He actually uh, uh, Uncle Press nails a spear into his arm. He lies struggling. Uncle Press picks up the bomb to disarm it, then realizes the quigs are getting the upper hand. He threw the switch um, with some tack into the quig's mouth. It left the quig in little bits. Uh, they use water to liquidate it across the field because water neutralizes the tack. Um, tack is very important, by the way. Um, I, I mean, only on Dendoron for now, but yeah. Um, the, bomb is the bomb is gone except for one small ball, which Bobby puts in his pocket um, and whatnot. Uh, Figgis then lures Bobby and Lore into the mines where they find an immense supply of tack. They real and then that's when Figgis reveals that he's actually Saint Dane. He has been selling the tack and like inspiring them to fucking blow shit up and fuck stuff up. Um, yeah, there's a lot of violence and shit. Not it's not as bad as Animorphs, but like it, it's some real shit. Um, Basically, they realize that, like, the real Figgis died when one of his tack traps by, uh, backfired, and he disguised himself. He sold it, urging them to rebel. Um, he also uh, disguised himself as Malos. Uh, the, of, the, of the Bedouin, there's Queen Kagan um, as his chief advisor, and um, making the Bedouin knights, like, hate the Malago. Um, the traps then go off in the mine. Some shit happens, blah, blah, blah. And there's a massive, like, underground explosion as Bobby throws some tack. Um... They managed to push a minecart that held a wave of water and a giant. Wait, uh, they push a minecart that held the unconscious lore into the ocean and through a vent shaft. Bobby swims back to shore and surveys the damage. And although um, most people are alive, the um, the like explosion, like most of the Malago huts are, are destroyed. Um, the castle has fallen into the ocean because of the force of the explosion. Most people survived, but some people died. Hydrate, thank you so much. Um, it's a good time. We're all happy. Um, uh, whatever. Uh, the, two the two tribes can then use their best strengths to rebuild and improve each other's lives. Malago farming and building and Bedouin engineering and chemistry. Um, uh, at, at one point, they like are trying to escape and they head to the flu, uh, Lore and Bobby, where um, St. Dane goes, Chloral! And sends, like, a bunch of water and a shark after him, like, coming out of the flume. Um, baiting them as well for the next book. And, uh, whatnot. Uncle Press rips Bobby a new asshole over bringing shit. And Bobby's like, I couldn't have saved you without it. And he's like, you needed to figure out a way. You didn't need to save me. Um, it's shit like that. Like, you're not supposed to mix the territories. If you're gonna mix territories, you're just as bad as St. Dan. which is a very strong theme throughout the books that after you have finished the series and understand Ravinia, you understand what the fuck press was talking about. And like, it's, it's nuts. Um, uh, basically, um, after everything's kind of said and done and Dendron's fine, Bobby travels back to Second Earth with Uncle Press, hoping to just, you know, go back to his life, um, where he realizes that his fa house and family have disappeared, um, leaving not even a trace to show that he lived there. And so, uh, you know, uh, Saint, uh, Press says, you know, there's a lot that I can't explain to you right now um, that I will answer in time, I promise. But, like... You're a traveler now. You need your and and Bobby. The big thing that I forgot to mention, Bobby Pendragon is the lead traveler, which is a whole nother level of responsibility that you have to have on here. He is the lead traveler. All the other travelers will look to him, and he needs to make decisions. He needs to figure shit out, and it's incredibly stressful. And he absolutely gets PTSD and trauma and shit. It's really fucked. Um. He decides that he wants to continue uh, averting St. Dane's mission, um, his evil mission. Uh, we, as the reader, are privy to St. Dane and Bobby's struggle against each other, um, and where 
St. Dane, it kind of seems like he wants to just destroy everything, and Bobby wants to, like, not do that, you know? That'd be cool. Save the universe, save Hala. What is Hala? Hala is the universe where all the territories live in. That is Hala. H-A-L-L-A. Yes, no H. It's Hala. Um, and it's a good time. So, uh, the, uh, uh, at one point, Osa dies, um, which then makes it so that Lore is no longer, like, she, does, she loses her mother, um, and it's uh, pretty bad. Uh, there's the Traveler Rings, which are important. Um, although initially reluctant to believe the story, Mark and Courtney accept it in time, since everything's gone and only memory. Um, and uh, as Press sets off for Chloral, Bobby goes with him to uh, fulfill his, his destiny. Uh, that is pretty much uh, the entirety of it. Um, pretty good. Uh, overall, uh, 6 out of 10, because it's fun. It's great if you were 2002. Uh, when Osa dies, it's really, really terrible. Um, there, uh, to be clear, this is uh, uh, this is a series worth reading, in my opinion. It's fun. It's interesting. Um, you know, obviously spoilers, but it, as I'm sure Katie will mention here, there is a lot that I left out, and I probably put too much in this. I probably could have skipped the majority of it, um, but we'll we'll we keep going. So, um, with that. That is the entirety of The Merchant of Death. I will be quite a bit faster uh, moving forward. Um, my food should be here in 12 minutes. If Warren is anything to be trusted by. Um, but um, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to stand up again. And uh, we're going to do a uh, call, call, to, call of engagement. Because Hobie Ho! Hobie Ho! Let's go! Alrighty, so, where does Hobie, Hobie Ho come from? Very important. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. So, we are now going to head into Act, or Book 2. And this has taken a very long time, and like I said, we will fucking be faster in the future. Lost City of Far. So, Book 2 takes place on uh, the world Chloral, which is an entire world... Uh, that's covered in water, like all ocean. Think uh, less islands than in One Piece. Um, like no islands. It's just floating barges. Um, really cool. Uh, let me see. Vo Spader. Uh, here we meet... Um, f a Coral is apparently like the most fun place you could be in. Um, here we meet the traveler, Vo Spader, who um, has met Uncle Press and uh, is unaware, I believe, of his traveler status at first. He doesn't know. Um, they go to Grallion. It's a really fun time. Um, all the technology on Chloral is really cool. So when they get there, they have to avoid sharks. Those are the quigs. Um, have fun, Ada. Um, and it's uh, a top tier vibe, um, quite frankly. Uh, they have, like, um, since it's all water-based, all of their stuff, like, uses water. So, like, guns just use, like, highly pressurized water, which will fucking rip through you. Um, they have, like, s like bubble helmets, which is why, like, Press teaching him scuba diving was important. It, all, all the stuff that Uncle Press did was to prep him for being a traveler, we, find, we start to realize. Um, they have these, like, helmets that are, like, look like a giant, like, bubble with a little, like, harmonica. And you, like, put it on, and it, like, vacuum seals to your head, which is really fucking freaky. But it forms perfectly to your face, so it almost looks like you just have, like, a thin veneer on. And it allows you to breathe, like, normal and talk in the water. It's fucking crazy. They also have, like, little, like, I uh, think, like, um, a little kickboard with handles, but it's, like, a little motorized. But the motor just, like, if you push the handles and squeeze them harder, it'll pull more water in and shoot more out. So you can, like, skirt around and, like, fly around and shit under the water. Really cool. Really fun. Uh, Grallion is sick as fuck. Um, and the, uh, that's basically it. Uh, it's, it's cool. It's fun. Um, Lost City of Far is a great book. <sighs> so the, um, the, the plot introduction from Wikipedia, I'll just read it because it's pretty straightforward. Uh, this book 
Um, I have like these like special edition covers from this box set, which look a little different. So like this is like the compass. Whereas like this book looks sick as fuck. This is why I, I really wanted to read this book. Like that is what the original cover is. Like that looks sick. Um, it's great. Vacuum sealed head. Yeah, absolutely. Who decides who becomes a traveler? Great question. Great question. That'll be answered in due time. Um, mm. So, um, Lou, uh, at the end of the book, uh, Lore fl uh, flumes to her home in Zada, while Press and Bobby flume to Coral. Most of the book takes place on Coral, a planet covered in water. They live on, yeah, barges called habitats. Gralian, it's, uh, Gralian is responsible for growing food for Coral. Um, they also head to Zada at one point. Um, and Pendragon goes searching for a mythical city called Thar. Um, ba -ba -ba, to stop St. Dane, um, a demon traveler who wants the territories to go the wrong way so he can re... -re uh, St. Dane wants the territories to go the wrong way in these turning points and so that he can rebuild them in, like, in his image. Um, you know, is, is kind of like the, the core point. He kind of wants to be God. Um, they realize that um, there are... They find clothes as soon as they get there and they are brought by acolytes. So every traveler will designate a couple people to be their acolytes, which is who they send their journals to, and are also the same people who will go and leave clothes at a flume for when people go there. And then it typically ends up being that like the flumes know how to dump people when they need to be there for the clothes and stuff. That's really cool. Um, with that, uh, Stinky Nasty, your boy. So he just wants a, bu a bunch of assholes to boss around? Sort of, but, like, it's more about, like, breaking people's spirit and, like, them choosing the wrong, like, like, he didn't do anything. Like, yeah, he, like, pushed and influenced people, but, like, they still made the choice to, like, bomb the Bedouin, you know? Like, he didn't bomb them. They did. And it's like, mm, did you, though? A little bit, uh, sussy. Um, they are attacked by sharks. Bobby is saved by Vo Spader. Um, uh, him, who uh, is uh, infamous for saying, ho be ho, let's go, uh, as his favorite catchphrase. Um, I always kind of imagine them having a bit of an Australian accent. Um, it's just uh, personally. Oh, don't worry. We deal with the Nazis soon. Um, you, you, oh, never war, never war hits different. Um, Basically, um, Spader doesn't know that he is a, um, a traveler. Um, they also board a jet ski-like vehicle called a skimmer that's super quiet and super fast. Um, it's all doing shit. Um, Press then informs Bobby that he has to tell Vo Spader, which is just known as Spader from now on, that he is the traveler of the territory. Um, they end up staying at Gralian for like three, for a few, three weeks, three or four weeks, like having a wonderful time. Never war or never war? Ha 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 ha! Never space war. But never winter is my baby. My queen. No, lore is my queen. Actually, I don't know if she'd consider me a subject, so that's, you know, that's really the vibe. I gotta humble myself a bit, you know? Warren is five minutes away. Uh. Blah, 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 blah. The. They stay there for a few weeks. Um. Uh, essentially, a manufacturing barge at one point uh, is appears in the distance, speeding right towards Gralian. Um, and although the Aquaneers and the officers do their best, it fucking hits them. And like, think of like a city, like a giant floating city on a barge is is what it is. Uh, the barge uh, Magaran crashes into Gralian. Um, they uh, the travelers with press end up like hopping on to uh, the other one. And whatnot. Oh, Corin, uh, comments online. Thank you so much for the hundred bits. You're too kind. You did not have to do that. Thank you. Um, they end up. Um, they head over there and realize that everybody on this other barge is fucking dead. They're all dead. Um, due to eating uh poisoned crops. Um, Spader's dad is also killed, although he gets half of a map that his um. Uh, Spader ends up finding half of a map that um his father wanted him to have. Uh, Gralian then, um, is attacked by raiders, uh, like pirates, 
who uh, bombard Grallion with a bunch of water cannons and shit. It's a it's a bad fucking time. Um, they they are like, we will fucking blow up Grallion if you don't give us ten cargo barges of food. Uh, leader of the raiders, um, all the all the habitat's food except for Grallions was poisoned too. Um, Bobby recognizes that the leader of these pirates, these uh, um, uh, blah, 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 uh, raiders, uh, a guy whose name is Zy Roder, is Saint Dane in disguise. He's the leader of these pirates. Um, so, uh, Spader ends up kind of coming up. With, I'm just kind of reading this now at this point because I want to get through these books because the cool books where there's actually stuff to talk about. Um, Spader ends up just like fucking diving underwater. It doesn't matter. That shit doesn't matter. They end up um, f- like outsmarting them and are able to um, uh, like they disable the engines that provided water for the cannons, except that halfway through their plan, they were chased and attacked by the raiders. Um, Bobby decides while they're being chased to lead Spader to the flume. Um, Uncle Press was left on board. Bobby reaches the flume with Spader, activates it, and they both go to Zadah. Um, on Zadah, after an encounter with a Rokador, which is a, a light-skinned uh, person, um, like, like basically like they're white people, like pasty white people, because they live underground. Um, Vo Spader would look really weird as a Rokador. Like, that's a Rokador that's outside in the sun and doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, because they're not on there, if that makes sense. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's it. Um... Uh, they make it get to the surface when a bot to, uh, and they go to a bot to tournament, which is like Lore's race of people. Um, and they find Lore, who's just kicking ass in this fucking tournament, beating the shit out of stuff. Um, they end up, um, they explain to, uh, Spader about how St. Dane wants to destroy all these territories, that there's these other different worlds. Because Spader, when he shows up on Zadah, doesn't understand land. It, like, it makes him nervous. And he's like, he almost, like, he has... Because he always has his sea legs, he doesn't have his land legs, so he's, like, land sick. It's kind of funny. Um, you know, and St. Dane wants to destroy all the territories. Um, Spader says, like, whatever, I don't care what you say. Like, I just want to kill St. Dane if that's the guy who killed my dad. So, that's ultimately Spader's, like, Spader's in, but only for revenge. Uh, which is, you know, who isn't? Who isn't in it for revenge, you know? Like, you killed my father, prepare to die, you son of a bitch. Um, they end up, uh, they go back to uh, Chloral. Um, they do suspect that uh, St. Dane poisoned the crops. Like, you know, created a problem to, to then, like, fuck over more shit. Um, exactly. You know, big, big murder energy. Um, they uh, go back to Chloral and uh, find themselves as heroes as Galleon defeated the raiders. when Because they did disable the water cannons. But they weren't able to like fully fuck them up um, until they had to bail. But it turns out like they're heroes now because they did it. Um, Zy Roder Saint Dane escapes, and everyone's pretty pretty annoyed. Um, arriving now, Lauren, I cannot wait, my boy. Um, big uh, big energy. Uh, Bobby advises Fader to go to Panger City, another habitat, to find his mom. The only thing left is the other half of the map to the lost city of Far. Um, they are then um, they are then confronted by Rodar, Zy Rodar, um, and he takes the map. Like Saint Dane takes the map from them, looks at it, um, and that. But they grab it back, and they're now it's on a race to find Far. Far is this lost city that think inverse Atlantis. There's this mythical city underwater that like has land. You know, it, 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 inverse Atlantis is the best way to describe it. Um, really cool. If you are having deja vu, I don't know if you were uh, part of the gang yet, Snake, but, like, I did talk about the first three books a long time ago in a Fever Dream stream. Um, then, um, ultimately, they go to find Far, where they follow the map, they get to where Far is, they sink down and enter the city, where the Farians have invented something to cure the crops. Uh, they send out haulers, like a submarine, to start curing the crops, because all the crops are under, like, on the seabed. Like, on the ocean floor. Um, it's really cool. And, like, turns out, like, something was poisoning them, and they figured out how to do it. Um, because of the haulers, St. Dane knows where to strike missiles to keep them inside. Um, they uh, end up evacuating the people, because, like, fo- the city of Far itself is an inverse Atlantis in, like, a giant snow globe, sort of. Like, a giant dome 
that's like camouflage so people don't see it and they have like their people like you know make sure the other people stay away um and so they're different and like they have land they have like mountains because it's essentially like the mountain island like collapsed but they have the technology to keep like air and whatnot in really cool um like filtering shit uh they warn the city escape with them and then the city collapses they go back into the city to find press after they find him bobby passes through the council of far and finds that the old man he talked to earlier in the book died just desperately trying to reach a button they presses it for him and that causes far to rise back to the surface so that the haulers are able to get out uh saint dane escapes and they follow him to a second flume on chloral where they watch him escape to the territory of Velox, um, which is where he ends up going. Uh, he is also, um, uh, St. Dane is also Poe Nassi, um, who is, like, essentially a dude. Uh, he's the guy who urged another agronomer to create this, like, uh, like a growth hormone for the plants, which turned out to be a fucking, like, disease, diseasing the crops, you know? Uh, it's a good time. Uh, wonderful time. Um, and ultimately, like, it's the way it is, but Spader's on board now. Um, they defeat St. Dane by um, saving the city of Far. The, the lost city of Far and fucking over, like, not curing the crops is the turning point. If they can't cure the crops, like, shit's just fucked and it's bad. Turns out they fix it. He says he's arriving now. I want to see if he's here. Just a moment. Alrighty, so my food is here, which means we are going to take, uh, before we get into uh, the Never War, we're going to take a short intermission where I'm going to eat, because if I don't just sit and eat, uh, it'll be bad. It, uh, quite frankly, will not be the right vibe. Um, this is a wonderful time for questions and shit. Um, so please, if you have any questions so far, or can think of anything, please let me know. Um, I would love to answer them. Uh, I just got Panda because it's easy. You know? Okay. Uh, he was good, thank you. Enjoy your order. Eh, fuck off. Get your snacks, rehydrate. Oh, hell yeah. Is the food all there? It checks. Oh, hell yeah. Goofy. Yeah, I spent way too much fucking time on the first one. Um, way too much time. So, uh, uh, Mims asks, is Blue Eyes White Dragon a traveler then? Is St. Dane a traveler? He's a demon. Um, let me play some royalty-free music. There we go. Perfect. Let me know if it's too loud. So, it's a really cool series that, like, nobody knows about. Very few people that I've ever met. Most of them, you guys. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I bought Special Edition. I just bought, like, the box set. And so they have these, like, different covers where, like, this has the ring. The other one, um, Far has, like, the map. Um, I'll show all the covers. They're all kind of interesting, but they're not the ones with, like, Bobby's face. Um, St. Dane's spirit animal, Great Dane or St. Bernard? His spirit animal would be a Doberman. He chonky. Welcome back. 
Um, uh, Jackie asks, what are demons in this universe? Where are they from? It's more of that people call him a demon. Um, I have not explained what he is. Um, unfortunately, yet. No ranch incident. Is he a traveler? Technically? Did I take my glasses off? No, I took my glasses off because of the screen reflection. It bothered me. And yeah, I didn't want to fog up my glasses. Mmm. That's good. Like, it's very fun. It's a very fun book. Um. Gosh, depending on, I don't want to, like, I, we might have to do this also on Friday. This might have to be a two-parter. Just because, like, there's a lot to cover. Is he hot? He's always talked about with, like, long hair. So, like... Like, he's got, like, his, like, I, I don't picture him blonde. I always thought he had, like, black hair. And these, like, steely blue eyes. Um, is kind of how he looks. He's very, like, like a shitty Loki. Silco? Yeah, like if Silco was like worse. Yeah, long black hair for sure. Yeah, Bobby is sick as fuck. Like, I am nowhere near doing the books justice with um with how much um like like how how cool all these worlds are and stuff. I'm going to try to be much more succinct moving forward. Because, like, I just read the Wikipedia, which, like, worked, but, like, y'all don't want to just watch me, like, read the Wikipedia, because you could read it. Um. What's really fun in Lost City of Far is that there is a, um, there's a bar that they always go to, and they get, like, this mild alcoholic drink, because they're allowed to drink it, because it's not, like, age-gated. And, like, they're always going back there. It's a lot of fun. Hmm. No worries. Have a good one, Slytherin. Yeah. I, these books are so much fun. It took me months to, like, reread all the series because it's, like, it's a lot of reading and I had to just, like, push through. But. Yeah. Getting child drunk on kid beer. It's a, it's a good time. Hmm. But, um, overall, we have two tipping points on territories and two wins. So, good time. Cirque de Freak. Hmm, I never heard of that. Even in death, may you be triumphant. Hell yeah. What I really like about the Pendragon series is that it the entire concept of the travelers and figuring out what the hell they are, how everything works, like there is an explanation. We do get answers at the very end of Raven Rise and the beginning of the Soldiers of Hollow. My fortune today was you set your sights high and enjoy striving for the best things in life. Okay. I believe you. So. The Giver books. Hmm. I haven't read those in a long time. I'm making a mess. Mm-hmm. 
Sorry, we'll, we'll just be like breaking for another couple of minutes while I finish eating. Oh, the vampire's assistant. Is that the one with, um, with, uh, what's his face? Daniel Radcliffe? As, as we get further into the books, it's really hard. So, like, the first set of books, Never War is pretty self-contained. Never War is where shit starts to get real. Reality Bug. And even, like, Blackwater. But... Quilling Games is where we start to see, really, what St. Dane's plan really is. Um, as well as... Holy shit! Andy Mitchell! How did I forget to talk about Andy Mitchell? Oh my god. Okay. Oh my god. Okay, so. Mark and Courtney, during the Lost City of Far, end up, um, they, uh, the big thing that they end up doing is, um, uh, Mark, like, they just do more investigating and some other bullshit. They get garden poultry fries. They're delicious. Um, Andy Mitchell is uh, a bully. He is nasty. He's big stinky. He is the worst, um, is, is how they continue to describe him. Um, he is just garbage. He's, like, uh, got, like, bad breath. Uh, he looks like every bully. Every poor bully you've ever met. And I, I use that word purposefully. Um, in Lost City of Far, um, Mitchell gets introduced as like this bully. He's like, he's like, where the fuck's Pendragon at? Not here to protect you. Because people stopped bullying Mark because of Bobby. Like Bobby's like, you know, if you're going to bully him, you got to bully me. And no one wants to like fuck with Bobby because he's cool. More like Bitchell. Um... He's like an idiotic, cocky thug. He smokes cigarettes and shit. Um, and he uh, he ends up, like, finding when one of the, like, journals gets sent to Mark, like, he figures out, he's like, what do you got there? Some story? Let me read it. And, like, Mark's like, no, no, it's just some, like, fantasy story. And he's like, I don't know, man. I think this is Bobby. What the fuck, man? And so Mark is, like, having to lie to Courtney that, like, Andy Mitchell has seen these books. Where the red fern grows? Mm -mm. I didn't have to. Um, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Someone shared that Jason Isaacs as St. Dane. Tom Felton would be a good Andy Mitchell. What does Jason Isaacs look like? You know what? Okay, yeah. Yeah, Lucius Malfoy. This is how it was actually that's that's it. Lucius Malfoy. That's St. Dane. If that's easier in your head. Child called it. I remember a child called it. That was fucked. Mm hmm. I mean, it's important to read, like, read stuff that makes you uncomfortable sometimes, I guess. Like, to be aware of things, but it's also a matter of, like, emotional maturity and stuff. Hmm. So, okay. Andy Mitchell 
ultimately now knows about the the, the things. Um, they get a lockbox at the bank or something for the journals. And that's it. But Andy Mitchell will become much more important. You right, Luke. That's fair. That's fair. I see you. Okay. I'm going to take... Let's get into Never War. <clears throat> Never War is uh, set on Third Earth. Um, I hope you like the Hindenburg. Basically, um, hmm, we meet a few different travelers at this point. Uh, let me pull up Aja. Aja is a bossy boss babe. Uh, like, she looks like exactly what she should. Like, the, the artist rendition is exactly what I pictured in my head. She's a bit of a cutie. Uh, a cutie patootie, quite frankly. Um, but she is a smart know-it-all. Um, she is the traveler on Velox. Because at the beginning of the book, uh, Bobby and uh, Spader go to Velox. Um, uh, because, oh, at the end of uh, the second book, at the end of Lost City of Far, um, Uncle Press dies. He succumbs to his wounds because um, St. Saint Dane, Saint Dane goes to First Earth and sends, like, Tommy gun bullets through. And those bullets hit Press and he dies. Bobby has the super emotional, frustrating time where he's like, yo, what the fuck is up, dude? What the fuck, man? Step the fuck up, Kyle. And, like, Bobby's like, I, I can't do this without you. And he's like, Uncle Press is like, it's okay, Bobby. I will see you again. This isn't goodbye, but it's up to you now. You know, like, I I'm, I'm gone. My body will be dead. Like, but you're the lead traveler now. Because, like, Press was the lead traveler, and this is where, like, Bobby fully becomes the lead traveler. Um, we also start to notice a pattern where all of these travelers, parents, guardians, or, like, the traveler before them, have died. Start to pay attention. And I'm sure if Spader were to go find his shit, it'd be gone. Um, except not really. I think only Bobby's stuff is where, like, Bobby doesn't exist anymore because Bobby is the lead traveler. He's always... Um, in the Never War, we meet uh, Aja Killian, because as they get to Velox, uh, Aja Killian said, uh, I already fixed the turning point here. Nothing's here. St. Dane showed up. He then immediately said, first Earth, and then bounced. Um, and uh, greeted by bullets from gangsters that St. Dane hired. Um, they uh, end up, uh, the gangsters are the quigs, I believe. Um, because they were dogs in the fur on like on Earth, um, and I believe they're gangsters on the second one. Uh, where we meet Gunny from Pendragon. Gunny Van Dyke is just, just a blessing. Um, he is. God. Just a delight. Um, I don't know. Okay, here we go. Here's a good picture of him. He, um, so the Never War takes place on First Earth, which is in 1937. Um, Gunny, uh, is the bell manager, the bellhop manager of the, um, Manhattan Hotel. Um, that's, that's where he, uh, resides. That's his, that's his place. Um, it's, his name is Vincent Van Dyke. But he goes by Gunny. Um, and uh, he uh, brings them in and whatnot. It's a good time. Saves them from it. Um, uh, Bobby and Spader end up getting hired as bellhops so that they can kind of, like, stay there. Um, as they try to investigate and figure out what the turning point is. Um, 
and investigate the ties between First Earth's Turning Point, rival crime fathers Max Rose and Win Farrow, and the Nazi Party. Um, a big theme that will happen, sometimes Bobby will show up um, and shit's just already getting fucked, but a lot of times Bobby has time to acclimate and start to understand a little bit of the structure of the world that he's going to, this territory, and understand the people before like he starts to figure out what the fuck's actually happening. Um, why is it first Earth if, it if its time is earlier than second Earth? So, first Earth, like, so Earth has three separate turning points, or three different things, apparently. Um, or, you know, there's just three points in Earth that you can go to. First Earth in 1937, second Earth, which is uh, 2002, 2003, current common day, and 5310, um, which we go there in this. Um, they... Um, in order to kind of figure out where, like, what is going to be the big significant thing, uh, Gunny and uh, Bobby end up traveling to Third Earth. And Third Earth, set in 5310, is um, the traveler there is a librarian named Patrick Mack. Do I have a picture of him? This is the closest thing that I have to a picture of him. No. Nope. There's Patrick. It's also Sal. So Patrick Mac is uh <laughs> He is, uh, what is he? Traveler from Third Earth. Uh, he ends up, um, they have some questions about, they, uh, there's a Zeppelin showing up, um, a giant, like, uh, uh, you know, air Zeppelin called the Hindenburg. And they start to realize that the Hindenburg must be the turning point. Um, it's not Morgan Freeman, but like head canon, it's always been Morgan Freeman. Does time move on the Earth, or is it always that year? The travelers will go where they are needed. Um, so time continues to move at that point. It's always going one day at a time. Well, yes and no. The time is really weird. It's hard to... Hard... First, second Earth is er, and, and third Earth are really weird to explain. Colin, thank you so much for 300 bits. It's always Morgan Freeman. I, yeah, kind of. Um... It's 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 kind of hard. So they go uh, they end up going to the future and the future is amazing. It is super clean. It is really cool. Um, a lot of people live underground um, like in this like their cities are underground so that the natural state of the earth up top is like beautiful and well taken care of. Uh, the library is amazing. They have this super computer that has like holograms and all you have to do is just say something and it'll like immediately pull it up. Uh, when they when they Google, essentially, like, Google, like, Bobby Pendragon, nothing shows up. But they see Mark Diamond. They see, you know, Courtney Chetwind. Uh, they they kind of have some fun with that. Um, they end up, um, they end up, when they, they inquire about the Hindenburg, what happens to history if the Hindenburg doesn't crash? And it takes the computer 20 minutes to solve, which is insane. Like... It turns out that if the Hindenburg doesn't crash, the Nazis win World War II through whatever thing. Um, it predicts in the future where they save the Hindenburg, industrial spies working for um, Max Rose would lead to the Nazis developing an atomic bomb and disastrously winning World War II. What, honey? You feeling puppy? Come up here. Look at Zuki's little feet. Look at his little feet. Love you, baby. <sighs> um, good night, Ion. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. 
and be a different you could travel to first earth and be in a different month week year yeah absolutely yeah you could be totally different you just go where you need to um timey wimey bullshit pretty much uh if i do that does that fuck you guys up i don't think so no it doesn't this is delightful bye on um essentially i uh, like they deal with uh there's a few other people that are important um uh bu -bu bum uh saint dane is hiding as a spy uh hides as a raven sometimes sometimes he turns into a raven um max rose is a ruthless gangster who has a spy ring in the manhattan tower hotel he sells government secrets to the highest bidder um he supposedly dies trying to save all of his money um there is uh we meet jinx nancy olsen who is a pilot for the coast guard who um helps bobby um she's really cool uh she's been grounded from flying but you know does it anyway Win Pharaoh is the nemesis of Max Rose, who would do stop at nothing to destroy him. Um, Max is wealthy, whereas Win's own reckless actions means he lives in like a, a slaughterhouse in the meatpacking district and hiring gangsters. Um, ultimately, in order to fuck over Max Rose, um, Win Pharaoh is going to use like a bunch of fireworks to blow up the Hindenburg. Um, they then realize that. Um, the uh that saint dane has been posing as max rose's girlfriend esther um and it's not super crazy important um there is uh they looked up um ludwig zell um who was a nazi operative who worked with rose uh they searched everything but came with nothing um and uh saint dane also takes the form of ludwig van zell specifically so that the nazis don't figure out that the hindenburg was in danger um very important uh some good shit um basically um the the big like they figured out i have food and now they're just angry um the flumes will send the travelers to where they need to go so Bobby doesn't need to worry about it. St. Dane chooses where to go. So St. Dane is, is purposefully driving. When he uses a flume, he is using it to go where he wants to go. Um, the flume will recognize that Bobby and the other travelers are trying. Like They only know where to go based on what they heard St. Dane. Because he typically will say something. Give it away. And... He, um, ultimately, like, you know, like, they will make sure that you're near where he's at. Like, St. Dane must be nearby if you show up there in some capacity. Um, they end up, um, dealing with a bunch of shit, and it really comes down to, um, them realizing that, like, you know, uh, possibly, like, they need to stop the Hindenburg because all those people are going to die. But since Bobby knows the future and whatnot, like you can't, like we can't, we have to let the Hindenburg blow up and crash. And those people on there die. Otherwise shit. Like we lose all three territories. Like earth is just fucked because it changes history. Um, ultimately, um, Spader gets really, really emotional and actually tries to stop the fireworks from going off to prevent, like, to save all the people. Um, and they end up, um, Bobby chases them down. Um, Gunny, like, tries to hold Spader back, and he fails. Um, and ultimately is stopped by Win Pharaoh. Spader begs Bobby to save the Hindenburg. Um, you know, like, he, Bobby, like, is looking up at them, and, like, he can see people in the Zeppelin, and, like, doesn't want them to die, and, like, he's reluctant. And Gunny, ends up holding Bobby while the rocket launches and the Zeppelin burns because it's what needs to happen. It's really, really, really fucked. Um, after everything's over, Bobby gets really pissed that like Spader's emotions almost got like almost fucked up all three Earth territories and tells him, go back to Chloral until you can control your emotions. And like, I will call you when I need you, but you need to fucking grow up. Um, 
He gets like like he's 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 filled with angst and shit, and um, like uh, essentially. See now, I want to like make sure on the wiki that like I'm doing the right thing. Like I, I'm I'm reading the right book because I now I'm like okay, let me go to the Nevermore. But now I think I can click on this and go to the Nevermore. Um, just to make sure because I because the the wiki has the stuff from. Where, where is the Nevermore? Um, they have like the Mark and Courtney stuff, which is important because I don't always remember what's what's going on with them. Um, so it, it's a it's a big thing. It's a big fucked up thing um, that they end up dealing with, uh, where the um, like Saint Dane's kind of thing is like, see, it's not black and white. It's not just good guys versus bad guys. Um, is the big thing. The kids are like uh, 14, almost 15 at this point, or at least Bobby is. Something like that. And it's just, it's fucked. Because it's like, the needs of, you know, a few lives here, because like, that's what was meant to happen. Bobby's cursed with the knowledge of the future. And like, it's bad. Oh. Um. St. Dane... Can, can can control the flumes for himself. Just to answer Sugar Crash's question again, just to make sure I got it right. Um, and it, it, it's ultimately left in this weird, ambiguous thing where Bobby ends up going home to, like, Second Earth for, like, a small vacation for, like, two weeks. And Gunny shows up um, saying, like, I knew your great-grandfather and ends up heading to Velox. And that's where we head into the next book. Um, I don't believe anything else important happens in that book. Yeah, shut up, you. Like, the wiki is not set up. It's very funny. Um, yeah, I knew your grandpa, which is just me. So, now we get into... How do I go to the, the next tab? Why doesn't this one? Yeah, reality bug. Um, nothing too crazy. Um, of note, um, jump light and whatnot. So I'm gonna switch back over to my intermission. I'm sorry that this is so like disorganized. <laughs> I figure it's still fun. It's dedicated, and like I said, we'll we'll end up. We'll have to go to the other half on Friday. It'll be a two parter. Mmm, James Bean. Mm -hmm. So, the reality bug. That's where shit starts to get weird. So, Saint Dane, like, although Bobby won, Bobby realized that like. He kind of, like, had to do some bad things and that, like, he's not a perfect goody two-shoes. And he can't be. Um, and it's pretty fucked. So, um, Bobby ends up, uh, goes to Velox, um, with Gunny. They encounter St. Dane and, uh, four of his holograms, which is, he uses to escape and goes to a territory called Elon. Um, in Rubik City, he meets Aja Killian, who we met on the previous page. And Rubik City is, like, it's a seemingly cool high-tech city that's, like, deserted. There's, like, nobody there. It's kind of boring. It's very similar to Second Earth, except for a large black pyramid in the middle of the city, which is the Life Light Pyramid. Um, Life Light is the coolest shit in the fucking world. Um, it is heroin if it didn't, like, fuck your ass up. Um, yeah. So... Life Light is essentially like virtual reality pod. Think kind of like the Matrix a bit, where they like they get in and they they eat Gloid, like the the people like faders and whatnot who like run it. Um, like the people are all alive, but they choose to hang out in Life Light, where it's like your dream world virtual reality. You can live in whatever jump is what it's called or fantasy you like. 
Uh, they take uh, dreams and thoughts out of players while still governing them by the rules of reality. Um, Bobby, uh, uh, Aja gives Bobby a demonstration by putting her control wristband on Bobby's head, which uh, then suddenly makes a projection of uh, Bobby's pet dog, Marley, which, like, fucks him up for quite a bit. Um, faders are people that monitor the life like, jumps, and vetters do the medical care. Um, and, like, he ends up going into a jump for 20 minutes where his basketball team is, like, invincible, and they're badass as fuck. Um, and, like, the, the, the gloid that they eat has all your nutrients that you need. It's just kind of weird. It's not really, like, a safe thing. Woody Dick? Oh. Talk about... That guy probably had a heart on. The third... <laughs> um, we end up like um, like the kind of like problem with Life Light is that and like Velox is that Velox is kind of already lost um, Aja in her big brain has already figured out how to stop St. Dane and that she's going to make a reality bug She's going to make a bug to put in the software. Because the reason why uh, Rubik City here on Velox is all fu is like all fu it's like in ruins now almost is because nobody wants to work. They all got their stimmy checks. They're like, I'm going to go for a jump and they're not going to leave, you know, and that's just the way it goes. Um, so basically people are just like, why would I want to live in the real world when like, it's like Ready Player One, kind of, but like before Ready Player One was written. Um, so like, and not nearly as like cringy with the movie, which they didn't do the book justice. Although the book was also kind of, I, I didn't mind it. I listened to the audio book. Anyway, um, pretty much everybody in Velox is in Life Light. Nobody's taking care of shit. Food can't be grown and the territory's gonna crumble. They're just using like gloid and shit. Um, she installs the reality bug, uh, a virus designed to modify jumps to be less than perfect. Uh, it takes your good dreams and your fears, according to Aja, and Bobby enters a jump. Um, all his opponents are taller than him. His coach gets a heart attack and he gets like a bloody nose and shit and he's bad. Yeah, it was pretty fun. It's a fun book. Yeah. Yeah, lots of boy nonsense. Absolutely. The movie was still entertaining, but, like, it really wasn't, like, the book, which was kind of frustrating uh, for me. Um, but it was still an, enter like, it was still an entertaining movie. Um, it's just that it's, like, mm, a little problematic sometimes. But it's, you know, whatever. It's a, it's a good story. It's a, fu it's a fun story. Fun time. Um, like, basically, it just kind of makes it so that, like, your shit's not perfect. Like, you're not, like, a god anymore. Like, your fears are getting put in there, and it's bad. Uh, St. Dane also modified the bug, and it's now far more powerful. Um, jumps have been diluted so much, and people are, are starting to just die in life light. Um, and they, uh, Bobby and Aja decide that what they need to do is, like, the way to, like, stop it is, like, we just need to, like, end life light. Life light needs to stop being a thing, and we can start, like, focusing on this shit. And um, they go find uh, Dr. Zetlin, who was, like, 12 when he created this, because, like, he's super smart. Um, he's the only one who can remove the virus, but he's been in a lifelike jump his entire life. Um, the uh, alpha, he, like, they end up are able to um, get into Zetlin's thing, and they, uh, they realize that it's not easy to let him exit the jump. Like, is, that's the hard thing they have to deal with. Uh, Bobby ends up going to Sadag, gets Lore to help him, and um, Aja plans to enter the jump to get the source code. Uh, Life Light ends up malfunctioning, and they're taken into like an Old West jump, um, and St. Dane's there, and then they leave. Um, they go to Zetlin's jump, where he lives as a 16-year-old boy who calls himself the Z, as I'm reading from the wiki. Uh, he lives in the Barbican, which is uh, which can stand upright or on its side. It's this really cool, like 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 uh barbed wire looking thing kind of it's it, it's it's hard to describe that's how i pictured it um like a like an impossible shape um and finds out it's been sabotaged by saint dane um uh, the reality bug is taken on a physical form um 
uh, like a, a black shaped shifter and it chases them around and they eventually get rid of it. Um, when they leave Dr. Zetlin's jump, all of Life Flight becomes shut down. Um, there's a ceremony honoring Aja and um, Dr. Zetlin gives a speech about how corrupt data had infected the grid causing Life Flight to shut down. Velox is pretty much resurrected with people getting used to actual reality. When Dr. Sever, who is actually St. Dan in disguise, announces that Life Flight shall go back online. Everybody scrambles to get back in, and St. Dane wins the territory. Um, Zuki, no. Out. Ah. This is very important, because ultimately, when they were unable to go back to Life Light, they were going to be fine with, like, dealing with shit. But they lose. St. Dane wins by just saying, we're going to put it back online. It's just a switch, baby. Um, people are immediately like, fuck it. So, that's it. Um, it is brutal. It is the first defeat. And after two books with a clear victory, one book with a muddled victory, and now a, fi a first defeat. A thing that, like, um, what's really, really cool in these books are always Bobby and St. Dane's interactions and the way they talk to each other. They talk to each other almost like they're old souls, like they've known each other. Like, like St. Dane will talk to Bobby like he's known Bobby forever. And Bobby's always like, you don't know me. And he's like, I know you. And it's just, uh, it's just fucked up, man. And, um. It's it's rough. It really starts. To, it destroys Aja like inside. Um, on Second Earth, Bobby and um, or no, Mark and Courtney end up looking for um, an acolyte, uh, Press's acolyte, to learn what they do and to become them, and they become the acolytes. Um, that's pretty much it. That's that's all that's important in the reality realm. But we lose. Which brings us to Black Water, one of the coolest books. Um, Kasha. Whew. Kasha. Kasha, baby. So we furries now. Here is Kasha wearing like a tunic. Uh, here's uh, another picture. Imagine it's kind of like Zuki, um, where it's on like a, a forest planet esque. Um, it's hard to describe, um, but it's yeah, basically like they're just cats. They're they're big cats. Um, this this is DJ McHale's villain art. And quite frankly, I'm here for it. Um, black water is nuts. Um, the blurb on the back of black water, because um, I figured this might be helpful too to give you a good idea, is um, yeah, my kitty ears. Um, are we supposed to see stuff? Oh. There you go. Thank you. Yep. Oopsies. <laughs> um, so Blackwater, really cool book, um, is another one that starts to go off, son. Um, that's the cover. Oh, I guess uh, real quick, I'll show the covers for the other books that I had. Um, so Lost City of Far. Looks like this, which is like the map. If you are a hairless cat, are you still furry? Absolutely. Thanks, gang. Uh, the Never War has a little biplane. Uh, Reality Bug has a really cool, like, toxic symbol, radioactive symbol of, like, the bug, the virus. Blackwater has this really cool cover. The Rivers of Zadok 
has this lion cover and it's not as good as the actual cover because the actual cover has lore on it. Lure? Lore? I always pronounced it lore. I don't remember how much this was. I think it was, it may have been like a hundred bucks. Um, the Quillen Games has like a, a pawn on it. Well, Pilgrims of Rain, the bees. I, I, I just realized that it's, it's the bees, Katie. I love that. And the books, I don't know if you noticed, but Pilgrims of Rain is book eight. We have Merchants of Death. They, they start to get a lot longer. They start to get a bit more, uh, a bit more into it. Raven Rise. Anyone notice anything interesting on this cover? And then finally, the Soldiers of Hollow. Anywho. <clears throat> so I think I will... What time is it? It is 8.30. Let's see uh, if I can get through Black Water. Okay. And then we'll, we'll call it uh, Anarchy. Hell yeah. The Pentacle. Yes. It's a star. That is the star that designates the flumes. They're one in the same. So, Black Water sick as fuck right um i believe it's edict 43 it might be edict 46 i could be very wrong here and i'm willing to do so. i'm willing to be so um the blurb on the back says just when 15 year old bobby pendragon thinks he understands his purpose as a traveler to protect the territories of Hala from the evil saint dane he is faced with an impossible choice the inhabitants of elong are in danger of being wiped out by a mysterious plague the only way Bobby can stop it is to bring the antidote from another territory, since moving the items between territories is forbidden by the traveler rules. If Bobby chooses to save Elong, he could endanger himself, his friends, and the future of every other being in Hala. This is some nuts shit. Elong goes off. Um. Okay. She better not come in here and start talking to me. Um, ultimately, uh, after they lose Velox, they uh, go to Elong to look for Gunny because Gunny was like, hey, I'll go to Elong after St. Dane. You figure out what he did here and we'll be good to go. Okay? That's the vibe. And, and, and Bobby's like, okay. So the goal is to go find Gunny. I'm going to show you. To go find Gunny and see what's going on. Um, when they get there, um, Bobby's attacked by Quig humans and is rescued by Boone, uh, another jungle cat. Um, he is Kasha's acolyte. He is cool, and we love Boone. He is the furry you want to fuck. Just saying it. I hate to say it, but he's the one. It's just it's the way it is he's he's nice he's sweet he's caring he has like uh he's very much of a foil him and him and kasha have a very similar foil to um they mirror uh bobby and courtney oh i'm sorry loop i'm sorry someone's gotta say it um boone explains that on elong uh Klees, K -L -E -E -S, um, are the dominant and intelligent species on Elon. Uh, humans are known as Gars and are considered less intelligent and inferior to Klees. Uh, Klees use the Gars for menial labor, high-risk jobs as foraging and tang bait. Tang being um, these, like, dinosaur... It's a red-eyed dinosaur-like predator that roams Elon. Um, 
They have a hint of intelligence. Uh, they have three sharp claws. I think of um. Basically, the the way that I I always kind of pictured it was like Velociraptors. They have Velociraptors there. Uh, yeah, Luke, you are. Um, it's Edict forty six. I was wrong. I was doing that from memory. I was like, it's forty three or forty six. Um. So ultimately, um, like the guards are treated like 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 dog shit, um, like and most of them like people even keep the guards as pets because like you know it's like a, a dog or something. Um, Boone and and Pendragon end up going to the main city of the Cleves, Leandra, um, where he sees uh, Kasha, a forager, rescuing a gar on the jungle floor from a tang. Um, Boone told Bobby that she was the daughter of Segan, the traveler from Elong. So Segan is the traveler from Elong, um, which is important. Um, there's a circle of Klee, which is like the governing body, where they are currently, like Bobby overhears that the uh, Klees are debating on whether or not to remove Edict 46 which would then legalize the hunting and killing of gars for food, so they wouldn't need to forage. Um, there's a, a Ranjin, the viceroy is against it, while Timber uh, is strongly arguing for the repeal. Um, Saint Dane is revealed to be Timber, spoilers. And um, uh, out once the meeting was over, Saint Dane went up to Bobby and was like, I'm going to go to Second Earth. Deuces. And he just, like, dips. Bobby's like, I gotta get home. Um, the uh, we we end up seeing Mark and Courtney at the um, at the Big Brain. Yeah, dog like is important to him. Um, <clears throat> also, Sin, if you're still here, I bought Monster Prom XXL for my Xbox. Just saying, um, because it was on sale. Uh, Courtney, they're do like putting like trap like clothes at the flume. When Saint Dane suddenly appears, and um, they witness his hair catch fire and burn his skull, um, Saint Dane looks at Bobby and Courtney, or uh, Courtney and Mark, and tells them that the rules have changed, suggesting that acolytes can now use the flume. He gives them a beat up cloth bag for Pendragon and vanishes back into the flume. Um, suddenly, um, you know, after after a little bit, Bobby shows up out of the flume. And Mark and Courtney are great to see him. And they're like, St. Dane left this for you. He opens up the bag. And in the bag... <clears throat> in the bag is a severed hand of Gunny Van Dyke. Uh, with uh, his, his ring still on his finger. Like his, his, uh, his ring. Like the Traveler ring. Shit's fucked. They, uh, Bobby f goes back to Elong where he meets Kasha. Um, she... Refuses to help Pendragon because she doesn't believe all the bullshit of, like, she doesn't care. She's skeptical of it. Um, Segan helped build Leandra. Kasha loved him, blah, blah, blah. She lost all respect for him once he started talking about travelers because she thought that he was crazy. Um, like, she never believed her dad, basically. And um, they end up having to... Pendragon has to join some shit. Doesn't matter. Um... A, a, a Tang has to... Kasha saves Pendragon Bobby by from Tangs, but a Klee dies in the process, and Kasha's boss confiscates Pendragon and throws him into prison to be used by the Handlers. Um, on Second Earth, um, they get a message from the Acolyte, they head to um, the portal to the Flume, and Segan shows up and says, hey, the crops are being poisoned and then drops dead in front of Mark and Courtney. Mark realizes that the poison is probably the same that wiped out all the ones on Coral, and they must travel to Coral to investigate, the, like, themselves to investigate. They then, this is very important, they then send Segan's body back to Elong and then take the flume to Coral. But Mark and Courtney um, arrive on Coral, Spader's there, takes them to Gralian, where Tai Manu confirms their suspicion that the poison, uh, who was the agronomer, um, the poison is the same as the one on Chloral. After much debate about the dangers of letting non-travelers use the flume, 
uh, Spaders decides that the three of them should deliver canisters of the antidote to Elon. Because, like, at least if they're with a traveler, then the flumes won't... Because when they went through the flume, it was, like, a little weird. It was off from what Bobby had described. Um, it's, 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 it's a lot. Um, Bobby's in prison for, like, a month. He fights, um, and, like, the guards are, like, always, like, super protective of, like, this weird thing. And, like, they talk to it. Um, it turns out that the guards are actually, um, like, they, they trust him enough to show him a small amber cube, uh, and realize that there's someone intelligent, and here's the name Blackwater. Um, uh, doesn't know what it means. Uh, he doesn't kill his, he ends up escaping from prison, uh, Boone says Segan's died, and they go to the flume to retrieve the body. Bobby tries to convince her again, and she refused, but she said, I'll help you find whoever killed her father, because again... Revenge is a good motivator, not believing in, you know, psycho mumbo jumbo. Um, or whatever bullshit, you know. Um, you know, they, they go to the home, and they go back to Segan's house, and Kasha finds a letter that basically says, Yo, you were destined to become the traveler from Elong, and you still refuse it. Um, and, like, even mentioning that a guard named Pendragon would one day show up when Elong was in trouble. And they find a map leading to the, like, lost, like, the hidden Gar city of Blackwater. And reveals that he and Gunny have been to see it. At that point, Kasha finally agrees and is like, We're, we'll go see Blackwater. Because, like, my dad apparently predicted this. And, like, it might be real. Nuckin' futz, if you ask me. Um, on Elong... Um, they go to Blackwater and find a, a village full of intelligent and technologically advanced guards. Um, they've been living there, or Gunny's been living there, and they've developed a substance called Virulome, which allows plants to grow using nothing but air, uh, and it can save Elong from famine, which is kind of, the famine is like the... Hmm. The shit that they're foraging for, the Cleese, like, they, they used to not have to worry about eating because they would eat Gars, but then it's like, well, Gars kind of should have a tiny amount of rights, I guess. Um, and so they don't do that. And so now it's like the, the food thing's very important. <clears throat> uh, but they, they can do that, and Gunny reveals that the big plan is that the little amber cube is actually like a radio link device, they have like radio receivers. And that, like, they can, like, Blackwater can send radio transmissions to give instructions and directions to escape to the city at once. Um, Yorn, who is the acolyte for Segan, who died, reveals himself to be St. Dane in disguise, transforms into a raven, and to give, like, Blackwater location to the Cleves. Which is fucked. Because, like, he, and if you remember, Yorn was the one that came and said, like, yo, or, like, shit's fucked, yo. Um, they end up, um, Bobby goes to the flume all the time. He is. Mark, Courtney, and Spader are there saying that he's going to use the poison. They split up where, uh, Spader, Mark, and Courtney go to Blackwater with the antidote, and, uh, Pendrag and Kasha would go convince the Klee to stop. Um, they get, they get arrested. Um, he witnesses the, the advent Guards escape, blah, blah, blah. The travelers end up escaping, and they use the really cool, the, the, um, the Klees have an interesting technology where using the sun belt. So the sun is a giant belt in the sky. And so if the sun belt is above you, or you're, you're in position, they have what's called like a gig, which is like a little gyro helicopter thing that's powered by sunlight, essentially. It's really, it's really cool. Um, they get ambushed, and a pilot manages to get off with the poison. They destroy it, and dumping, you know, whatever, but then, like, they have nine more gigs with poison, and they try to just, like, beat them to black water since they're a little faster, and whatnot. Um, uh, doing, um, like, with the tanks of antidotes, they get attacked. They only have one tank left. They all show up back in black water. They get to hook the antidote up to the irrigation, create a mist barrier, um, they release it just in time to meet the Klees overhead. 
Zaint Dane is present to witness the victory for the Travelers, but flies off telling uh, Pendragon that he is going to Zadav. Um, the, um, Aaron is the leader of the Gars, Aaron, and um, got him and Gunny end up going to Leandra to basically, yo, let's form a coalition, Gars are smart, and let's kind of work a peace treaty because Edict 46 does not get repealed. It gets prevented. Brady, thank you so much for resubscribing for six months in a row. Congrats on one year. Sorry I'm late. Thanks for the community you made. Absolutely, baby. Thank you. Oh, hell yeah. Um, oh, shit. You guys redeemed Hydrate and, and, and Stretches, and y'all didn't tell me because I didn't have like that open. I had the little other stream chat open. Fuck. Y'all got to yell at me, please, when I, I don't do things. I don't want people to think I'm ignoring them. I just I have a lot of things open on two monitors. Um... Also, we'll be still watching Hunter x Hunter tonight, I believe. Uh, three episodes if you want to join. We can catch you up easily. You can kind of just jump in. It's all good. Uh, but hey, Brady, how you doing? Um, we're just about done with this. Um, uh, they form a coalition. It's Shit's all good. Um, Mark and Courtney attempt to take the flume back to Second Earth. But when they activate the flume, it causes the tunnel to collapse. And when it does, it strands Gunny and Spader on Elong with no way to escape. And the collapsing flume kills Kasha. Elong is left without a native traveler. Kasha is dead. Um, and it is just brutal it, it's really unfortunate because mark and courtney technically killed her by using the flu to get back home and it also prevents gunny and spader from able to even leave elon which means that now chloral does not have a traveler and first earth does not have a traveler that are able to travel they have a stayer they have stalers is what they is what they are now more or less um they do realize that while they were on Elong for like a month, Mark and Courtney, only a few minutes had passed on Second Earth. So time is different, is weird, is crazy. So basically kind of it. Um, on Zada, uh, Pendragon, uh, uh, Bobby ends up fluming there to follow St. Dane. And finds out that Zazu, which is the city, uh, the Baku city that Lore's from, their water supply is completely dried up, so they're in a drought. Um, he and uh, Lore end up cremating Kasha, and Pendragon um, promises to return to Elong to scatter her ashes. Um, how do they... Oh, I think um, St. Dane brings the body and dumps it to let Bobby know that like she's dead. It's really fucked. It's really, really fucked. Um, and with that, where we leave off for the Pendragon lecture is that we have now finished book five, Black Water. We have learned of, of quite a few new travelers. Bobby, the lead traveler. Vo Spader from Chloral. Gunny from First Earth. Gunny and Spader are now... Gunny's missing a hand, and Gunny and Spader are stuck on Elong. Kasha from Elong, now dead. Um, Aja Killian uh, is uh, still at Velox. She's not really combat-oriented, so, like, she doesn't need to go anywhere. She's just smart. Uh, but, like, they lost. They thought they won. She did what she could, but because of the reality bug, it was a lost cause. Like, St. Dane had won Velox a long time ago, essentially, is kind of what you start to realize, and it's unfortunate. Um, and Patrick Mack is in Third Earth. He's a librarian. And Earth, since we stopped the Hindenburg, First Earth is good, Second Earth is good, Third Earth is good, everyone's happy. Um, and we're all good. But right now, the score, if you want to keep track, is 4-1 to one in favor of the Travelers. But something very important that St. Dane continues and continues and continues to tell Bobby is that after the first territory falls, the rest will fall like dominoes. 
and he also has always said since the first book that Denduron will be the first territory to fall, will be the first like domino to fall. And we have to ask the question, is that right? Is that correct? We'll see. Um, it may be in the next book, Mark and Courtney become a lot more important, um, especially as we meet some of these other characters, because as we get into book six, which is the Rivers of Zadam, Courtney is dealing with this adventure that she was on, as well as like killing Kasha and like breaking the rules and and Mark in different ways. Andy Mitchell is still around. Um, and it's where those two start to become much more important players in the story. Um, because ultimately, they're not really sure. Bobby will mention from time to time about, like, what are we going to do? Like, what's going to happen, like, after we're done? Like, we'll stop St. Dane on all ten territories, or, you know, all however many territories. And I'll get to go home and be Bobby again. But he's gone back before, and there's no home for him to go back to. Bobby starts to struggle with identity, with, you know, he is a human, he is from Second Earth, like, he is Bobby Pendragon, he plays basketball, he uh, has a crush on Courtney Chetwind, his best friend is Mark Diamond, and it is the most important thing for him to not lose that. And um, I think with that, um, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, is there any questions so far? We have about like 12 minutes until I normally end. So if we do have questions, then I'll go ahead and take them. If not, um, we'll just kind of go into like, you know, end a stream anniversary roundup and whatnot. But I figure if there's any, any major questions that I've missed or anything, like now's a good time. Don't all get up at once now. Yeah. Absolutely. Crazy. So this series is nuts. Um I recommend it, but like go rent it from the library if you can. Um, how many books do I read a month? Um not many, actually. This took me a while to read through all of these again. Um it took me quite a while, actually. It was kind of difficult. Um, it took me most of the year because, like, I, re I was also reading, like, I started these and then my buddy got me into Stormlight Archive. So I read Stormlight Archive and then I read, you know, uh, Way of, I read Way of Kings. I read uh, Words of Radiance. I read uh, Oathbringer. I also read fucking... Um, er, no... Warbreaker, and then I also read uh, 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 ba, 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 the most recent one. I forget the words. I forget the name. Uh, Live the Demon Alyssa, thank you so much for the 95 bits. It's been a great stream. Just curious with all the. Where will the Golf with Friends stream be hosted tomorrow? Golf with Friends stream? I, I don't think I'll be streaming it. <clears throat> I don't know. I, Sin might end up streaming it, but um, I'll just be playing Golf with Friends with Sin tomorrow. So. Because, like, they're cool. <laughs> so i don't know if it ends up being um if sin does it which this is a great time to go ahead and shout out i'll just go ahead and take care of it um electric sin if you're not already following sin um they don't always stream all that often but they um it's always a good time and a good vibe as sin's really cool they're a really wonderful mod i know everyone like always goes and talks to katie but uh and we love katie we see on katie but like all of my mods are really cool and always available and all that yada yada yada. But like, sin's a fun time. So go check them out. How many books are in this series? Ten. We got through five books. We spent way too much time on Merchant of War. We didn't need that much detail. But, uh, thank you. I hope, um... Yeah. Grammy, it is bedtime, so... Sorry, kid. 
Tomorrow, no bedtime though, so go wild. Um, yeah. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Um, yeah, yeah, because like Eric and I are gonna end up, uh, yeah, we're playing with Sin tomorrow. It'll be fun. Um, thank you guys so much. Um, for 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 everything today and and everything every stream. Um, I know I I, I ended up. I recorded a lot of it early, um, but it, it's it's really been um, an amazing journey, and I, I, I really can't wait to to see where we go from here. Um, you know, trying to like continue to grow, and you know, a, a big uh, fear maybe it's not the right word. Um, and and I know Sin gets this um, a lot because we talked a lot about it. Is like sometimes we'll have like a large growth spurt, and then we'll kind of like plateau for a bit and like I, I've enjoyed that because it's although it's a little concerning when stuff grows and we start to like we kind of lose a bit it's it really important to try to keep kind of like what our community is the way it is like trying to keep that theme running through and, and, and doing that because like it is so very cool to to see you guys interact with you guys to to, to come on here have fun do crazy shit do weird shit be my inner theater kid that i never got to be and um I, I i you know i'm glad that it's you know it's it's a it's a place to it's like a bench in hollow night you know it's a nice respite so um this has been an absolutely wonderful stream um i will be taking some time to plan out kind of what i want to do this year in terms of like general stuff um just off the top of my head this year, um, Hester's been working on, and we tested it once, um, of, like, Twitch Plays Pokemon, where I think what we'll end up doing is, uh, Twitch, like, chat plays Pokemon, I'll shoutcast it, and every five minutes I get control, and it will be, like, Boon or Bane, do I help you or do I hurt you, and how quickly can you guys beat the game? Um, I know, um, next month, uh, we should start seeing the one year badges, which will be really cool. Um, so thank you so much for doing Hell yeah. I'm, I'm so grateful to Eric. He's like, he's my best friend through and through. And I love the guy. And I only, like, I want him to continue to be successful and to do everything. He's wonderful. And I, you know, I, thank you, Karma. Yeah. I, every, all of you guys, MCGM, you know, Denny, Luke. Katie, all of you guys, you guys are amazing. Jemmy, yeah. It's... It's just, it's fun, baby. It's such a wonderful time. Um, one year badges will come then. Um, my birthday will be at the end of July, so we'll do something cool for that. Um, that'll be fun. I'm trying to think. We will be doing Spooktober again this year. Um, and so we'll need to... That might be something that I might have my mods help me with is like having like a like pinned on the server on Discord a like like essentially like Google form where you could like submit like oh hey like Odie should play this game describe the game a little bit like for like the horror games and whatnot because I have some stuff I want to play but like we'll see Outlast 2 will be on it absolutely I hate that I hated the game I hated Outlast 1 it was terrible uh and I can't wait to play the next one. Um, and yeah, uh, there's always like the constant list of, of games that like I, I started and I end. And honestly, if I don't finish a game, I will try to get back to it. Sometimes I play stuff off stream. Sometimes we don't play things all the way through completion. Um, if that like is is uh, like a bother, I'm sorry. But uh, a lot of times it's more of just like what I find fun. Like, uh, honestly, like, Takeo's been a lot of fun. So, a schedule? Oh, God, I don't want to have to set it. Can, Sin, can you just tell me what I'm supposed to do each stream and then I'll just do it? Thank you, Alyssa. Hell yeah. Um, but I think the way that we're going to end this today is we are going to uh, raid somebody. And we are going to raid... Is Rebel live? They're str they just went live. But are they're still starting soon. Rebel, you're too late. 
Sarah Banana Z. Blueberry. Blueberry's playing Arceus. Maybe. Oh, hell yeah. Evil Within? Maybe. We'll see. And, you know, maybe too, if it's something that, like, people like, like, I'd be willing to try playing a game and, like, recording it and either having someone help me edit or learning to fucking edit finally and, like, put, like, you know, in how, like, a couple of parts, like, as, like, a YouTube video, if that's something people would be interested in. I don't, like, I always worry that my commentary isn't any good, you know, but also I think it's more of just watching, enjoying stuff, so. Um, that's what kind of, like, the Stream Ideas channel on Discord is. Like, that's that kind of stuff. If it's stuff you want to see, so if you want to do, like, I, I just have a hard time. It's way easier for, easier for me to do something if I'm like, oh, someone wants me to do this, cool, because, like, I already know there's an interest of some sort. So, you know, that's definitely part of it. Um, you know, so... Hmm. I think... Let's, uh... You know what? Let's raid Blueberry, because they're playing um, Pokemon Arceus. And I think if we get enough raiders, we can put them over 100 be cool um although also because they're not like actually live yet and i don't want to do it till they're just waiting um i'm going to shout out i am rebel rebel who is a lovely person in our community i am so proud of her she's very cool please go and give her a follow and go check out her stream when she's like playing and live as well um thank you guys so much for coming here i know this is only half of the of the lecture but we will get the other half on friday so um, I'm going to go ahead and hit with the exclamation point raid emote, and we are going to raid Blueberry. Like I said, she's very fun. Um, I believe she's um, verified accounts only, so if that's not your speed, then I understand. Uh, thank you, Shadow Work. Oh, hell yeah. And, I, I, and everyone who's lurking, all of you lurkers, I see you, love you, and appreciate you just as much. So um, thank you all so much. Um, I hope everyone has a wonderful night, and I will, uh, I will see y'all soon. Bye. If you're not used to doing, like, that kind of activity, you're definitely going to feel like shit for a little bit until you get used to it.